All right, there we are. Good evening, everyone. Yeah, hello to you too, my friend. How are you? Uh, good. Just... It was it was not that long ago you were on our stream, but in person, right. of course. In person. Right now, I'm up in Canada. 
Uh, as you can see, well, actually, someone took the dirty dishes behind me. That's that's good. Uh, like two minutes ago, there was lots of dirty dishes behind me because <laughs> I just ate dinner because you uh, asked me to join me uh, only an hour or so ago. Well, a little bit early today. Well, yeah, and, I, I uh, asked you like eight hours ago. <laughs> I took a nap. Try <laughs> the concept of time has left me and my body. Uh, though the uh, concept of gravity has taken over my body. You're looking at my gut today. But uh, yeah, how are you? This, doing, uh, doing good. Doing good. It's gonna be fun, isn't it? Yeah. So uh, I, I didn't have any particular ideas for the stream today. So Adi said, uh, "Well, what about Bucky O'Hare on the NES?" And I was like, "Well, yeah, I, I don't have it, but why not?" I do have it. I got that for uh, my oh, birthday. One yeah. Of the so year. okay. Yeah. So we'll we'll say I'm borrowing it for from you. Yes. For the uh, purposes you're not of this, pirating this. <laughs> this uh, I sent, uh, Yeah. I have my brother <laughs> go to my room and like FedEx it over uh -huh. overnight to you. Uh, but yeah, Bucky over here. Um, I was a gigantic fan of the cartoon. Yeah. Uh, see, I I never knew about. I mean, I didn't know anything about the existence of this at all until like you know hidden gem type videos started coming out. I didn't, you know, the, yeah. the, ca the cartoon that is among the, like, you know, uh, you know, th there's like that subset of cartoons. That's like most people don't know or don't remember. Uh, it comes at the very end of that era. Yeah. Like yeah. The, yeah. Like for me, know, it was seven Ninja Turtles until street sharks era. Yeah. You know, it comes at the tail end of that. Uh, which I think is kind of the uh, reason why it got canceled so quickly, because it's actually a fantastic show. Yeah, it's, it's only one comic. season, isn't it? It's only one season. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I wanted that game so much for my birthday. My mother uh, got it for me, and oh. I played this basically my whole life. And PAL version, right? Yeah, the PALCOM version, because uh, it was a PALCOM game. Ah, oh, Being okay. the uh, European end of Konami. And, uh, yeah, I just kind of remember the first time I came to the U.S. in 2002, 2003. Um, I think at that time, uh, what's that store called? Uh, Funko Land? Funko Land, yeah. Yeah. Funko Land was still around. And I remember just being perplexed by the fact that you could buy, like, used NES games. And I remember seeing Bucky here and kind of recommending it to my friends. And no one kind of cared. No one knew about it they're yeah. just like oh and now if you wanted to buy it i it's, think it's like a hundred bucks right uh, oh it, it might be more than that by now yeah uh, yeah it's it is, is a pricey game i wish i had it but uh but yeah i mean it looks awesome i mean Corey did a video on it many many years ago um yeah. called we, we did a we did a series called before and after where like you know i did one that was like before resident evil sweet home and he did oh, yeah, yeah. you know one that was before treasure bucky o'hare um so you know uh you know this is you know a lot of people kind of consider this the first treasure game in a sense it is the first tre like john john and i have like this internal fight uh, it gets bloody sometimes. <laughs> uh, but I keep telling him that this is the first Treasure game. Like, were they, were, were, had they left Konami yet when they started working no, on this? No, this was, so this is the game that put them together as a team uh -huh. and made them under, like, kind of a consensus come together and say, like, we should branch out and do something else because we work well together. Uh, but it's the same team that would go on uh, in total to go make Treasure. So. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not Treasure in name, but that's basically it. Yeah. Um, so this is an extreme... If you're into Treasure, first of all, I'm not a huge Treasure fan. I know this shocks people whenever I say it, but I don't think Treasure's games generally don't grab me much. Like, I don't prefer to get... I don't like the gimmick so much. Uh, and I find that the games tend to hinge too much on specific gimmicks rather than, like, a well-balanced gameplay. Uh, but that's my opinion. Um, but this game definitely has kind of like the beginnings of that, mm -hmm. but it's still enough of a NES era game that you get enough of that, that classic gameplay. Mm -hmm. I, like. I mean, I, I would say I like, I mean, when you think of like treasure, like the peak treasure generation mm -hmm. really was, I guess, 16 bit. 
And I would say I still prefer Konami's games of that yeah. generation uh, more than Treasure's games. And really, they were kind of competing with each other for just like, you know, outdoing the other in terms of, you know, just how over the top they could be. Um, but yeah. I would say I still prefer Konami's games over Treasures. So of do era, I. I mean, but but I, I like Treasure. I, I, I like Treasure. And, you know, I, I really yeah. like, you know, uh, the Sin and Punishment games especially. But. Yeah, Sin and Punishment is great. But, you know, the classic comparison for Treasure and Konami is uh, Contra Hardcore. Yeah. And I, you know, between those of Gunstar Heroes and Hardcore, I like Hardcore oh, better. Oh, absolutely. I mean, Gunstar Heroes is... is very good. One of Treasure's best for sure, but I, I yeah. do prefer uh, Contra Hardcore. In fact, when I first played Contra Hardcore, it was so crazy that I was like, oh, this has to be done by the team that left Konami. But no, they'd already left. Yeah, yeah. So, like, I, I thought it was a Treasure game, but no, it was just Konami trying to keep that crazy uh, spirit and out Treasure Treasure. Um, yeah, for sure. Uh, it should be said that I think, like, as much as I personally don't like Treasure so much in my own like personal collecting, I do think that Treasure's still probably like top top ten sixteen bit developer. Oh, I mean, the very talented. possibly top five. I very think very talented, like, regardless incredible. of what you think of you know the game. Yeah, play. it's just I'm not very good at shooters, so that kind of blocks me out of that. And then for the others, I just think other developers did those genres better, but I do think that Treasure deserves to be in like top 10 to two, top fives of the 16 bit uh, developer generation. Yeah. Uh, before I get going on the game, uh, and if you can help me keep up with the super chats as I'm playing, oh, I need to uh, open the chat. Uh, Thank you for reminding uh, me. Oh yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there was a $5 super chat from uh, Chandler white. Thank you. Saying uh, yo, Adi love your work question. Who is the first person at DF who knows Rich's habit of saying here and now? <laughs> oh, here and now. Yeah, TM. Uh, yeah, so Rich has all these, like, Richardisms. Well, I mean, uh, and, and John has Johnisms, too, you know. <laughs> yeah, well, John's Johnisms, I think, comes very much from being around Richard. Though. I think that's uh, I think that's fair. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, Richard has, like, here and now, from his perspective. He keeps saying from my perspective. Uh -huh, and I always... Uh -huh. I asked Richard once to take a picture from his chair. So that <laughs> what, yeah, I do want to know what his it, perspective is. <laughs> yeah, but like just because he keeps saying it so much, and like every time you say it, I want to cut to a camera angle from your perspective. Can I do it? <laughs> like, no, you cannot do that. My my, uh, my favorite one of John's is, uh, and this is key. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. This, uh, is, this key. is key. Uh, yeah, John has a few. Uh, Alex, Alex doesn't have too many. Alex's Alexism is just putting the microphone next to his like Adam's apple. That's basically it. Is <laughs> <laughs> is just saying UE4 stutter? Yeah, yeah, stutter. I guess that's uh, Alexism. Just, just uh, like Tom, mine is 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 shimmering. Yes, you have shimmering. Um. Tom isms. I don't know. I don't think I have any isms because pe people barely hear what I say. So <laughs> it's just mumble core. Um, but yeah, I will be making some new people have been asking, but I will be asking, making some new uh, DF videos in the coming months. But whew, we are pressed for time. You and I have been working together these last few weeks yeah. on some projects even. So like we are. I, I, I've, whew, I've, I've been busy. <laughs> yeah, we both been busy, and oh boy, uh, tomorrow, tomorrow you'll see some of our work, I guess. So Quite can't say so. what it is. Uh, but uh, you should all uh, check out LRG three. Yeah, so you started the game. Yeah, I'm starting now. Yeah, so 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 tell me uh, tell just, me about uh, the Bucky O'Hare show. I mean, the the bad guys are toads. Yeah, they're the toads. Um, and then and I mean, this, then I've got this Blinky, is... Dead Eye, Jenny, and Willie. Uh, yeah, who are, who are my allies? Yeah. Um. So, and basically, Will gets trans like he's a normal kid on Earth, and he gets transported to this uh, universe and becomes the crew member oh okay uh, of the um what was the ship called 
righteous nature or something. I might have um, said something on the on the front. Yeah, so you start on the green planet, by the way. Oh, Sorry. I thought you said you don't start on the green planet. Uh, I, I thought you meant the yellow planet earlier. Sorry. Oh, uh, okay. Before okay. we were recording the before recording this, yeah, asking me questions, yeah. and I, yeah. Well, so let's see. And so you well, can you, you can kind of see like in the ground here. Like I'm, I mean, this is on. I see ground. there's some speckle. Yeah, there's like it's there. like speckling in the ground. Like I don't, I don't. I, I was telling you that before. I don't, I don't know what the deal is. Yeah, that's not supposed to be there. Um, but uh, whatever. I, 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 I have a more, drop. I have a newer EverDrive, but I've, oh. I've been too lazy to really get it loaded up, so. Oh, by the way, uh, try. I didn't even tell you, I think, but uh, this week I got a OLED CX. Oh. My first OLED. So someone was selling one for very cheap here. Oh. In Canada. So I got it for about 800 US dollars. Nice, very which nice. It's a pretty good price for a large CX. So, and uh, I am totally converted, by the way, to the uh, gospel of uh, OLED. Now. Yes. I can never go back. Yep. And even my computer monitor is just kind of like, man, not the same. So, so, so what do the coins do? Uh, so the so there's different power ups, and as you you probably noticed already, you have a uh, power meter down there. Right. Uh, which if you pull down the shoot button, uh, you can activate. Bucky, uh, Bucky seems to do a high jump when I... Yeah, so Bucky do does a high jump, and if you collect the P coins, uh, the letter P, get your head out of the gutter, uh, the letter P will fill it up so you jump even higher. Um, as you finish the levels, you get different characters, the different crew members. And they have different power-ups, so uh, it's important to make use of these different characters mm. later on uh, with their uh, special abilities. But for this stage, you're just using uh, Buck. So, make your I always love this, by the way, the fact, like, scrolling up here, this tree, I always thought it was pretty cool. Uh, this whole effect that it goes from day on the ground to night as you climb mm. up. Or star. I, I think it is a day transition they're trying to simulate, not space, but I always thought this was really, really cool. You didn't really see that too much, uh, night to day transition in NES games. No. I can only think of one other example, which is a terrible example, but that is um, Simon's Quest. Where mm, there's a huge yeah, I mean, it, it, it's just kind of an instant. Oops, that falls. Um, yeah, so those tree branches, uh, you gotta jump quickly. Um, I mean, you know. Like, there was a time where, like, day-to-night transitions were, like, definitely, like, super... Now, how am I going to get that? Uh, don't get that now. Uh, just skip it. It's too, uh... You wouldn't be able to do it. <laughs> um... But, uh... You were talking about day-to-night transitions. Yeah, like, you know... Years ago, like... Like, back when that was, like, a, an interesting technical achievement... Uh, yeah. I definitely appreciated it. Well, oh, oh, you got one up. Jump. Trying to do that, so you got you lost nothing. Um, but like, like now though, that like day to night transition is like so old hat. Um, yeah, I, I, I like I I actually are. prefer like scripted day to night yeah. changes because like the actual like day to night cycle is like so unnaturally short and the fact yeah, yeah. that your character is then like running around at like nighttime to daytime to nighttime again without resting like it just it kind of doesn't make sense make sure you jump by the way then wait for the next one D does the game it's a very difficult game by the way if you haven't noticed yet I mean it's <laughs> not not Crazy brutal yet, but uh, well, you, you haven't seen nothing yet. After uh, uh, after it gives me a password, I might. Uh, I might switch. Are we gonna write down password today? Uh, well, why not? Yeah, I forget if it has infinite continues or not, but 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 uh, but after it out. gives me a uh, a password, I, I I might switch to the Mister just because I feel like something's funny with the EverDrive here. Hmm. Cause, cause, yeah. just these speckles that I keep seeing in the ground, right? Yeah, yeah. How you moved? 
<laughs> or if I just die out before I even get a password. <laughs> yeah. Oh, let me open the chat again. Let's see if there was any other questions here. Oh, someone's asking me what my favorite vehicle is. Uh, like it vehicle as in like in general like transportation vehicle or, or are they just trying to make brand. are they just trying to make audi jokes i think they're trying to make me say that so i used to drive an audi an audi quattro uh and they're very good uh, cars very dependable so uh, i do not na uh, my nickname is based on a car a car brand i do not mind <laughs> so. i mean you know aside from the fact that people do associate uh you know Audi with the car brand. Uh, mm. I mean, you, your your name is just like such great branding, really. I know, right? Because I mean, I mean, it's it's because no one else is just called Audi. It's it's four letters. I mean, that's strange. Uh, you'd think that other people would have like picked that name. I mean, I don't know. I don't. I don't hear anyone else going by like Subaru. <laughs> mm, yeah. It's probably true. Volkswagen. No. Yeah. No. No one. No one goes by car Volkswagen. names. Like people go by things from video games. But yeah. Honda. Honda. I know. I know a couple of Hondas. <laughs> yeah. But they're in Japan, obviously. You gotta be careful here when you jump. By the way, because those lasers will stop your trajectory. Mm. You get hit. Yeah. This is. But look at how much stuff is on the screen. By the way. Yeah, it's and huge. it's scrolling so smoothly. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, absolutely incredible. It has slight parallax scrolling. If you didn't notice. Yes, yeah, so this guy got to shoot in the back, so watch out for his uh, Whoa. <laughs> his uh, rock. Just go very close to him, uh, and then uh, jump over him after you froze that stuff. Yeah. Shoot him just like a madman in the back. He's a very easy boss once you get down the uh, system. That's kind of the thing about the bosses in this game. I find most of the bosses very easy, uh, whereas the stage design is nuts. Mm. It gets way worse than anything you've seen. I don't know how much of a button mash you are, but if you go close to him and just mash that button, you'll kill him mm. in no time. There you go. God damn. I'm, having, I'm definitely having trouble actually jumping over him, though. Yeah, I think a normal jump uh, will do the trick, actually. You don't need to do the oh, super really? jump. A well-timed normal jump should do it. Or just do it. Well, as you can clearly see, you can play absolutely terribly and still kill him. And still do it. I mean, you did <laughs> That's the first stage, and we are uh, saving Blinky. And... The thing about this, so you can select stage, you'd think there's a bit of a Mega Man thing going on here. Um, right. But if you pick a stage where you don't have the right character to make your way through, you won't get anywhere. So, it's a bit strange. They could have just left it linear, really, but... Uh. Uh, okay, so we got a password. Taking pictures of... NES passwords is personally, I think, the primary positive contribution of smartphones to modern life. Yeah. Yeah, I just so happen to have my original mister. You know, I, I just built a second mister the other week, but. I haven't, like, worked this one into, like, a, um, like, a permanent location yet, mm -hmm. but, um, but so it, it, it does Pac -Man happen had a, to be a cartoon. Pac-Man had several cartoons, I think. It's Pac, it was the 80s one, which is like Pac-Land. I know I this is going to be, one. uh, going to be weird. But I'm gonna be capturing it <laughs> via the retro tank just because that's what what's already hooked up and that's what we're doing. <laughs> oh, uh, Chris Walsh is asking if I moved to the U.S. I have not moved to the U.S. yet. 
uh, but uh, uh, we are working on the process, so eventually I will be making my way over. Uh, what happened to displaying anything? I'll let you handle that, and I'll try to answer some questions. I see. Uh, well, there are at least two super chats. Oh, there are. Do you want to read them, or should I read them? Uh, well, you you, you might not. Since you're born. <laughs> you you might not understand the context of this first one here. There was uh, yeah, five dollars five dollars from Britt McLean saying, "Is is Bucky O'Hare a hidden gem, or is it slapping on the sly?" We had uh, if you ever watch Classic Gaming Quarterly. We had uh, Chris from that show on the stream a few weeks ago, and we, we were saying we need to come up with like a, a different term for hidden gems, like an alternative okay. term. Uh, and his his, uh, his suggestions he came up with were, um, or uh, his first one was was money in the couch. And I'll say, oh money yeah, yeah, Bucky over here. That's the that game's money in the couch, or. Uh, or you know, or or it's it, it, you know to to appeal to the to the youngins out there. You know, you'd say it's 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 slapping on the sly. <laughs> I'm not familiar with his content, but based on that, I guess I gotta check it out. Uh, there was another super chat you said. Let me. Find uh it. yeah, from Edward Nielsen. Oh, it's right beneath. It. Yes, <laughs> thank you. Saying, uh, yeah. try and Audi. What console era is your favorite for Konami? Oh, one. That, is, one. that is really hard. Uh, I I have to say eight bit, uh, and then if I can extend the eight bit into like the PC Engine as well. Like if you look at Famicom and PC Engine, I think that's my like favorite era of uh, Konami. And then I love so much of their arcade output uh, from like early to mid nineties, but since that's not console, I can't say that. So, Famicom, PC Engine, Konami is best Konami. Yeah, I think I, I, I think I'd say. Your signal? Yeah, I don't. <laughs> I don't right. know. It's weird. As soon as I loaded up the NES, it like stopped working. All right. Uh, or it, it loaded up the NES Core. That is. Um... Oh yeah, MSX Konami. Uh, my friend collects MSX. And he's super into Konami on MSX. Hang on, so. let, let me grab an HDMI cable. That's probably the sure, easiest sure. solution. Yeah, I love Konami MSX. Like SD Snatcher, Metal Gear, Tre Treasure of Usas. Uh, there's so many good Konami games on MSX that are forgotten. I mean, I don't... Uh, you can get, like, the Saturn collection of Konami MSX. And uh, PlayStation as well. Uh, so if you're into Konami and MSX, pick up that collection. And... Uh, Really too bad we don't have a collection for newer consoles with uh, Konami MSX stuff. So, Pachinko Konami. Uh, I have stories about Pachinko I can tell one day, but uh, uh, I'll say that for later. But I did get the... Uh, I actually got uh, threatened on my life in a Pachinko parlor in Tokyo once. So, uh, I don't like Pachinko too much for personal reasons. Space Mambo is another great Konami MSX game. Konami on PS1. Uh, I do love a lot of Konami on PS1. Uh, like SR Dreams and stuff like that. Metal Gear, obviously. I don't think that's their best, though. But if you're into RPGs with Soy Cut and stuff, I suppose you could make a very good case for them there. Yeah, the main event. Someone's saying the intro to the cartoon slaps. I'm guessing you mean Bucky over here. And yes, that intro does slap. <laughs> I don't know what slap means. I'm, I'm assuming it's a good thing. Uh, so I, 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 I have generally heard the youngins use the term slap in terms of like music like you know oh that that tune slaps apparently 
I always used to make fun of people that couldn't keep up with the times. Like, you know, when I was a kid, the, you know, stuff we said. In the last 10 years, like, language has evolved in such a way that I just... I can't keep up. So I've become what I may used to make fun of. I, I mean, I, I, I was never good with the slang of my time. Like, I like... Like retroactively, as as a child of the '80s and '90s, enjoy like you know the stereotypical like '80s isms, like radical and stuff like that. But I never said it when I was a kid. No, I don't know if anyone did anyone like outside of California. <laughs> I don't know. On fleek, <laughs> on fleek. I I think that's kind of at the end of our. That was like when we were in our mid twenties. No. On fleek, I don't know. Wait, I think what? I heard that actually being used by people, but by then I was, I was too cool to say stuff like that. Oh, people are saying you're too loud, which I think is just you. I mean, that's and that's I'm just normal, quiet, which and is also just me. Yeah, uh, <laughs> that's how the stream is going to work out, people. Yeah, uh, I I talk very low. Yeah, because I've... I was born a quiet person. <laughs> I mean, is that is that just is that just Norwegians in general? Yeah, actually, um, that that is very much a cultural thing. It is very much kind of frowned upon to be loud where I'm from, especially mm. in the region I'm from. So it's been very hard for me to adjust to this uh, glamorous life of uh, fame and uh, infamy on the internet. Uh, so. Yeah. I I have been thinking of getting just like a voice box, you know, the kind of thing you just put to your throat <laughs> and like just talk through that and like be done with it. Uh I I actually ended up <laughs> when we shot the um shot the pickups video, I um Oh god, yeah, tell them about that. I I, I set up <laughs> like three redundant audio <laughs> recording methods because i had given our vastly different uh levels of volume yeah see in this demo the the ground's not sparkling i i don't i don't know if the everdrive is glitched with that mapper or if it was just a bad connection with my system or if the newer everdrive uh would fix it i've just been too lazy about actually like getting the everdrives i i hate Corey loves setting up that kind of stuff, and I, I, I just, I'm, I'm like so. I also love it, actually. I've talked to Corey several times about stuff like that, and I, I love to set up, you know, things in order and alphabetize and update and all that stuff. Oh, I, John I... also does not like it. So, <laughs> like every time I'm going down to John's place, he's like, "Oh, could you like do this and that and this and that and just bring it down on an SD card?" I, I know. Yes. Like I, I, I almost asked Corey to bring some. Like, can you just bring some like ODEs flat like SD yeah, cards? I, like I set up mine to your place. I could have given you mine. Mine are better than Corey. <laughs> Uh, what planet is next? Oh, I also need to change my... Uh, you go to blue planet. Next. Audio input so I can actually hear this. Alright. <laughs> you should get this. Yes, thank you for remembering that. You should get this. You should, you should get this. <laughs> Corey, Corey will literally float around you like a specter. Especially <laughs> try. It, it, it's this, like, quick shelf grab. Yeah. It's this quick shelf grab and then, like, flip. He's, like, got it... He's yeah. like got it down to like this like muscle memory motion. It's just like oh, it's like a marionette, you know, you basically. This. Yeah, yeah. It's just like <laughs> and, uh, like you you are joking. This is not us like <laughs> making this up or embellishing on it. It's that's literally how he was at that LRG store. <laughs> you know, you, I would you walk around this. with you two a few times or just like walk up to you. And he was right behind you. He's like, "Oh, you should get this. Yeah, you yeah. should get this." Yeah, I, I was, I was telling our, 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 our friend Drumble this, and he said, "Yeah, if Cor if Corey had a, if there was a pull string doll Corey, that would be one of the yeah, lines. Yeah. You know, you should get this. A pull string. Hey, that's a good uh, marketing idea. You should look into the production of that." Uh, there was a five dollar super chat from uh, Robert Carlson, which was, uh, which is, is. Is not Corey's grand grandpa, but that was Corey's grandpa's name. So we always, when Corey's around, we all he always says, "Well, my grandpa, 
how to how to super chat. Uh, yeah. He says, uh, "I watch these streams for the analysis of newfangled slang." Uh, I don't know how much you'll really find here. Um, okay, what level's next? Blue. So now we, we have to introduce you to the concept of changing characters, so if you push select. Oh yeah, yeah. that's a very it's... instant, I'm surprised how instantaneous that is. Right? Uh, so Blinky here can uh, shoot uh, ice, so do, those ice cubes you're walking on? Oh. Uh, hang on a second. Oh, you got the controller. Press the FTS button. Uh, I, I'm using the, uh, the Switch uh, SNES yeah. controller, okay. so I wanted to put j jump on B and attack on Y. Like uh, any sane person would do. So yeah, so he can uh, break these blocks of ice, which if you can't do that, this level is impossible. Uh -huh. uh, if you hold down his power, uh, he can fly. Uh, the first fly here is very short. Oh yeah. yeah. So oh. Just, and he and also slide slides and sinks like a rock. <laughs> Does he slide more than Bucky, or...? Nah, there's no difference. Yeah. He jumps, uh... He doesn't jump Oops. as high. But, uh... For the time being, you mostly have to use him. So, this is a tricky level. I think this is the level that kind of, if you... For people who don't get into this game, I think this is one of the levels that do it for them. Because it's an ice stage, first of all. Yeah. Uh, with all the, uh, traps that come with that. And then... You have this section coming up, which uh, you will find very familiar from another game. By are, the way. Are, are there ever hidden goodies inside the ice blocks? Yes. Mm -hmm. Like, can you tell before you break them? No. no. And be careful so you don't hit the. Uh, oh water. yeah, there was a one up there. And uh, you also have to be careful so you don't shoot too many that you can't jump on higher platforms. Yeah. Oh, I guess I need Bucky. <laughs> no, he could jump on that easy. Oh okay. He doesn't jump that low. But I guess I, I've already established that one-ups do not respawn, so... No. Is his regular jump the same as Bucky's? I, I don't know. Uh, maybe it is. Uh, I don't think so, but yeah. Oh, yeah, it can be also bad. So, guys, like, that coin right there has nothing on it. What is that? Do? It's a... I think that's a high score coin. Oh. Yeah, this stage gets kind of... Uh, Insane. Actually, all these stages in this game gets sort of insane, but uh, this one. Yeah, I'm not gonna say anything. I want you to see it. I want you to experience it, but together <laughs> we'll beat it. Uh, I'll check out the chat while you make your way through the ice here. You, uh, you and John did a, did a stream. Was it last week? Or the week before? Yeah, yeah, so we, uh, John and I did a stream last week for Final Vendetta, uh, which is that new beat-em-up from Bitmap uh, Bureau. Uh, the people from, uh, who did the Center of Crisis, uh, which is a very good game. Check it out. Yeah. And they have a new beat-em-up coming out called Final Vendetta, which is uh, basically a new. I didn't realize Geo it wasn't brawler. out yet. It's not out yet, it's coming out on the 17th of this month, I think, or 15th? Uh, 15th or 17th. Uh, and, uh, yeah, so we were playing that. It's a very cool game. Um, and they are releasing it on Neo Geo as well. And, uh... Yeah, we got a little Battletoads action here. Yeah! <laughs> I was waiting for you to notice. This is very Battletoads, and they can kill you. So I was waiting for that to happen as well. <laughs> uh, so this is a very tricky part, by the way, because you have to, um, kind of... There's certain parts where you shouldn't break the ice and stuff, but mm. I'll let you kind of figure this out. But yeah, so... Uh, I mean, does here... he have a tail? No, they do not have a okay. tail. So that is not so Battletoads. Yes. So yeah, you kind of got kind of got her. Well, you could shoot. try to fly underneath. Oh, I guess you could, maybe, yeah. But yeah, or you can be fast enough to get under. But yeah, this is a tricky part. You probably will need a few tries. Uh, no pun intended. Oh, oh, I see. There's actually two of them there. Yeah. So, yeah, I follow them data. Uh, but they did reveal in that stream that John and I did voice voices for that game. So, some of the bad guys in Final Vendetta is uh, played by me and John. Are, are, so. are you just, like, the Y signals or whatever? Or are you, like, like bosses? 
Uh, so we're just some of the baddies, like just some of the generic thugs. Because uh, we didn't want to like... Uh, hog the spotlight, so to speak. So as you beat up people in Final Vendetta, you can maybe hail who is me and who is John if you listen closely. So <laughs> yeah, if you pick up Final Vendetta, check that out. It's a cool game. Do, do you, and, do you uh, say things appropriate to yourselves or... Uh, no, it's mostly like uh, small like threats towards the player or like just uh, you know being beaten up. It was very interesting uh, recording so, it because you just have to record all these various grunts of uh, being hit hard, being hit uh, light. You were just dying, able to do that with your microphones falling. at home. Yeah. So I'm, I'm noticing yeah, that funny. there's like a permanent checkpoint here. Yeah. Uh, like, I don't really oh, yeah, yeah. seem to have to worry about it. So, like, I'm kind of wondering what the point of 1-ups even are. <laughs> like, is there a ah. checkpoint every Wait. screen? No, there's not a checkpoint every screen, as far as I remember. Man, this, 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 like... I wonder if you can jump over the top of this tail, but that's not how it's supposed to go. Um... Uh, this is this is pretty. But tough. yeah, you can do it that way. If you just do it a little bit slower, you should be able to land. And or now, I'm going to try the hover method again. Yeah, do, do the hover method. Again. Mm -mm. <sighs> Almost. <laughs> <laughs> if you had the power, I think there was P earlier, but it resets when uh, you die. Oh, okay. So that could I'm be sure one. I'm sure someone in chat. That could be one reason. You can uh, duck as well, by the way. So maybe try ducking. Oh, I, I okay. I think I have it figured out actually. Mm -hmm. I'll check the chat again. Uh, someone is saying that. Uh, oh yeah, someone else is mentioning already that you can duck, so I guess that's... Yeah, well, I, I'm, I'm realizing now, like, oh, I can... I can... I can get on the second snake and just wait for the top snake to pass. Yeah. It, it, what, what's throwing me off is, like, they... Uh, like, their... Their heads go further than their bodies actually do. Yeah, it has some weird like that, right? And I don't think that's what happens in Battletoads. No. They just look like Battletoads yeah. snakes and act similarly. So. Yeah. It's it's nicer when you can actually climb on them though. <laughs> yeah. Pump on them. Oh. Don't you die here, mister. And you have another screen. Move your favorite part. Uh, oh. oh, see. <laughs> uh, so there you gotta be quick. Yeah. Yeah. So this is the checkpoint. I don't know if it's a permanent checkpoint like the previous one was. Though. Mm, might be. Might be. There you go. Whoa. <laughs> it gets a bit cheap. And Blinky has a smaller hitbox. I don't think that's true, is it? I feel like they all have the same hitbox, but maybe you're right. Okay, yeah, it does seem to be another permanent checkpoint. Oh, good. Okay, so you don't have to struggle so much with that. Oh. Yeah, I'm, I'm really zero, surprised the about these these permanent like even at a even at a checkpoint or even with a continue, it's like the same. Yeah. Right. So Kinto Zero was saying that one of his favorite highlights from last year is when Audi got tried to play Sword of Sodan. Oh god! Uh, do you remember Sword of Sodan? Yeah, uh, I mean, to the ex did you buy it? <laughs> I did not. <laughs> wow, I could not believe, I could not believe how bad that was. I was, I was in disbelief. Yeah, that was a classic Amiga game, sir. I oh, I Which thought it was just a Genesis game. No, no, it's on Amiga as well. And I mean, you know, it has large sprites. It's basically a uh, China Warrior uh, Western version. It's just about the size of sprites, basically. Mm. And that's it. Oh, you got through the snake part. I mean, does, does each level, like, kind of favor one character? 
Uh, so the later levels don't favor so much one character, which is the strange part, so... Well, I mean, th that's about what I would expect, really. Well, I mean, this stage, I mean, you could probably switch back to Bucky, by the way. Yeah, it uh, looks like I mean, this that's stage... gonna be necessary, actually. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, Bucky can shoot up and down, by the way, as well. Oh. There's... Yeah, so if you jump and push down and uh, shoot, he shoots downwards, which there... will be useful later. There... At least when he's on the ice, I don't know if this would be on non-icy surfaces, but there's a delay of aiming up. Oh, is there? Yeah, like... Oh, uh, this is... Like, this if things weren't crazy part. right now, I'd, I'd show you, but... Yeah, yeah. like, I'm... Like, I'm, so, when I'm yeah, sliding gonna... around, I'm trying to aim up, and I can't. I assume okay. I can't shoot those ships anyway. No. But you can uh, watch out for those boulders, so... Basically, at the end, you're not gonna have much to stand on. Yeah... This... this feels very much like a treasure, kind of. Those, uh, those spaceships make me think of the, the alien... Whoa! The alien ship from, uh... Rescue Rangers. On Rescue Rangers? Uh, the second, the second level. Well, the second level that you have to do, anyway. In Rescue Rangers? Yeah, the, the level that has the, um... Uh, it, the level that has, like, the, uh, the, the mimic characters, like the doppelgangers, aliens, there's a, there's a little tiny spaceship that's the boss of the level. Oh, okay. It was an episode of the show, too, I remember it. Huh. I don't remember this. Maybe I should play Rescue Rangers after this. <laughs> Go ahead. They ruined many friendships. <laughs> Are, are you not a fan of the NES Rescue Rangers? Uh, I played the first one quite a bit when I was a kid with my friends. I was not super into the cartoon. Oh, see, so uh, it was... I, I was liked, huge into it. I liked the theme song just fine. Um, I watched DuckTales uh, a lot more, and I wasn't much into Darkwing Duck, but I did love the NES game, the Darkwing Duck. I, uh... uh yeah. I, uh... I mean, at the time, as a kid, I liked Rescue Rangers more than DuckTales, but, like, as an adult, like, I can recognize oh, that, that DuckTales is, like, clearly the better show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but, I mean, the, the NES game is, like, just such a such a classic for me. I mean, I've probably I've probably played it on stream many times. Uh, but, I mean, it's, it's the first game I ever beat. So the thing here is that like this makes no the sense. guy up there is throwing like these um, bombs, I guess, or whatever spikes, spike balls. Yeah. Uh, if those hit the ground, it will open up a path. So you have to shoot those ice blocks for him to throw it on the I floor. See. Just keep shooting it like that. There we go. There you go. This is yeah. This is strange. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we can. Sh I if you can kill those, uh, green guys with Bucky, it, maybe? It, okay. No, I tried. Okay. I mean, they, they seem to be part of the level progression, so I guess it kind of makes sense. So, do I ha have to, like, crash and slide? No, 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 he has to open up two. Oh, okay. Yeah. I see. There you go. That's a neat little trick, though. I think that's a cool little thing. Watch out for the spikes under the platforms. By yeah, the way. it's a little hard to avoid, but yeah. Yeah, people are saying that they actually did buy Sora Sodan on Genesis, and I'm so sorry. Uh, the amazing you mean thing like back in the day, or or yeah, back in the based day. on? Okay, I was gonna say based on. Uh, uh, us playing well, today it? It's, yeah, I mean, today it's an interesting artifact. And what's amazing about that game is that it got a Japanese release. John has it. Oh, wow. And I'm just like, how? how? Yeah. yeah, I guess EA did have... Um, at the time, EA had a, uh, a Japanese uh, publishing branch. You're supposed to go to the uh, 
right there, by the way. Do I want that spiky thing to fall? Uh, I don't think I don't, so. I don't see what, yeah, I'll, ah. They kill you, so. It gets very Mega Man-y. Yeah, yeah, I wasn't sure if it might open up a way or something. Yeah. Man, what was it that I... I, I played something recently. I can't think of what it was. Uh, where I was like... Oh, what was it? You played something recently? And I was like, oh, this is like clearly by the developers of Fire Force 8. Oh, Nosferatu? No. I mean, I, 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 I can't recall if I actually looked up if it was from the developers of Bio Force 8. Theta? Uh, I, I, played I played something where, like, the character's movement seemed very similar. Similar? Yeah, yeah. like, the character's movement looked very similar to Bio What Force system 8. was it? Gosh, was it NES? I can't, I can't... Go all the way to the right. I can't remember. Whew. That was tough. Gosh, I, I played, I swear I played something where it's like, oh, this this seems suspiciously a lot like BioForce 8. Hmm. Gosh, I can't think of what it was. Yeah, it's too bad I can't remember. Try to remember and I'll probably know when you say it. But... Spikes on the ceiling. It might have been like a, a ROM hack or something. Gosh, I can't remember what it was. Did you play on stream, you said? No, I can't remember if it was on stream or... I'm totally blanking on what it could have been. Hmm. What a rare occurrence. Let's see. Sodan is a pretty infamous Kusoge in Japan. Yeah, it is. Uh, mm -hmm. When I worked there, I remember we discussed... Um, I had a dinner once with a game developer in Japan discussing Amiga and Commodore 64. And we talked about ports that were made to console from those from European American developers. And I remember mentioning Sword of Sodan and he kind of lit up. <laughs> kinda, oh, that's an Amiga game. <laughs> I mean, did they really have Amiga over there? Yeah, yeah, so Amiga did have a bit of a presence in Japan. Uh, not so much for game software, but uh, for uh, editing software. Mm -hmm. uh, like editing the, what? Like text uh, editing? Well, the, no, a video, like uh, oh, really? publishing editing, I think. Hmm. Uh, mostly Mac was very prevalent in Japan because Macs were much better at supporting Japanese text at the time. You can't shoot while you're flying, by the way. Yeah, I was... So, you can also use Bucky here, if that's easier. Yeah, actually, it might be... Probably it. <laughs> yeah, but, now, uh... that I, now that I try it. Oh, jeez. Oh, yeah, watch out for that. So, this, this level, this fight seems to have a bit of a time limit. Yeah, you have to beat him before, basically. And I think he has a little bit more uh, energy than other bosses. So, if you if you're yeah, closer, because with Bucky you, you can you can hit him pretty continuously. Yeah, it's not so bad. You just can't jump very high anymore. Yeah. Ah. Uh, yeah, just go closer to him and like, bang on that button. It doesn't really seem though like you're super limited by uh, number of bullets on screen. No. I assume you can avoid getting frozen in the ice, but... Yeah, you just have to jump. Yeah. Uh, he, does, he does not have pattern. I think it's every fourth jump or something. Oh, or okay. Yeah, like that. So. Not too bad, not too bad. Mm, it might be every sixth. Yeah, I think it's every sixth. Okay. Every boss has a pattern, so it's one of those games. Uh, there's very little randomness to the game, actually. Uh, I don't know if there's any kind of RNG in the game whatsoever, any element, so... Whew! Man! Whew! My thumb! See? It's a, it's good design, right? Because you, you pick up the stuff after, like, dying a couple times, you pick up the small details, mm -hmm. and you beat the boss, you know. 
it's not that hard. No. It gets it gets said to be hard. I mean, we're only in the beginning, and this game does take a pretty major turn, but not there yet. Beam Blaster and Toad Turbo Ball. Mm -hmm. Who, which character is this? Jenny. Okay. Uh, what plant is next? I just go red. Oh, so I kind of have a choice now? I mean, yeah, you can choose either, but I would go red. Uh, okay, so... Oh. So she has a... Uh, her power-up is kind of interesting, because it's... Uh, you can control ah. that ball, and the more power you have, you know, you can kind of have it hover. Yeah. Uh, for speedrunners, that's kind of the weapon that makes the difference, because on bosses and stuff, when uh, when you have a fully powered Jenny, uh, you can kind of obliterate, obliterate those bosses just like, in a second. Just like hold just the ball hover. inside them? Yeah. Uh, it's hard to control it, because uh, it has physics, so like... Uh, it doesn't just, like, stop on the dime, but, uh, yeah, it's a neat weapon. I mean, she seems, like, equally as good as... I, I guess the height of her shot is a, is a little different. Also, uh, it's pretty weak compared to Bucky's shot. Yeah. Uh, I think she has the weakest attack in terms of, like, regular projectile. So... So is the, uh, little robot guy, is he the only one that actually... Um, uh, actually has like a power that changes where you can progress? Um, no. Uh, that I, the one you're saving here, can, has a also power up that kind of goes into that. I, I love how they're doing this fake parallax here because yeah. you feel like the part that is actually not line scrolling. The part that's like, you know, the, the red and blue lines that like actually intersect with the plane that you are on. Like you yeah, yeah. feel like that's moving with the background, but it's actually not mm. like that. That is really effective. <laughs> yeah. It's such a awesome technical show piece. This game. Uh, I love so much about this game. We haven't even talked about the music. I mean, I don't know how much people can hear the music since uh, we're talking. It's probably on... I, I see some decent levels on it in OBS there. Okay. Because the music is one of the absolute best soundtracks on NES. Like, bar none, it's one of the best soundtracks. I mean, that's and, that's uh, basically every Konami game, so it's to be expected. Yeah, but I think this actually stands toe-to-toe -to -toe with, like, the best of Konami. So, like, this is, to me, a classic Konami soundtrack. That just, um, because of the generally low sales numbers and just kind of obscurity of it all, I don't think gets enough credit. So, I kind of composed it. I think it's uh, Sumiyama Tomoko, uh, who was a Konami at the time. Uh, she did, like, Esper Dream and stuff as well. Mm. I think that's the Doha composer of this. I might be wrong. But, um, if it is, yeah. She did pretty good stuff, and then, uh, uh, not so much more for Konami. So someone called Rob Young in the chat, by the way, saying that Micro LED is not successor to OLED. I mean... I don't know if this is like a discussion you've been having or not, but... Uh, uh, so. I mean... Uh -oh. uh, Mario is not, not a successor to OLED. QD OLED from Samsung Display is a successor to the, to the precursor we've seen from LG, which is WRGB. I mean... I don't, you know, everyone has seemed to believe like, oh yeah, it's it's going to be, uh, uh, you know, micro OLED is going to be the successor. But the thing is, I don't know if like, it's really at all guaranteed that they ever will even be able to shrink it down like in size and cost. Like we don't, I don't think it's, I don't think it's a, a given for sure. Also, I saw that we have a Yo-Yo Yoshio, which I'm going to have to log into a different screen to catch to catch his. Oh, long-time viewer. Yes. Of like every <laughs> of every channel. He, he has he has uh, a I've regular on the, on the on the on the DFs. Uh yeah, hang on a second. Let me 
Let me log in where I can where I can catch the ones that fly under the radar. Yes, yeah, a rabid rodent. Uh, Composer only did a handful of games, kind of disappeared. So if it's uh, Sumiyama, I'm pretty sure it's Sumiyama. Uh, she was a uh, so, uh, she did a few albums after. That's not game related. And uh, she's. I, I I have something in the back of my mind that I associate with her. But uh, yeah. Uh, but didn't do many Konami games, that's right. Did Esper Dream. Did Laser Invasion, I think. Uh, so yeah. Uh, Yo Yo Yoshio had a $3 super chat. Said, uh, What's oh. good, guys? Playing some furry games? Have you heard of Micro LED? It seems to be a successor to OLED that fixes all its shortcomings, having even faster response times and longer lifespan. Yeah, I, I guess so. I guess that that's what that uh, comment was was following up on. Yeah, I mean, I, I, yes, I mean it's something people have been talking about for a long time. I mean, I, I don't know if you, how familiar you are. Man, this reminds me of that part of Mega Man Two, and I Two, yeah, I man. will die on this hill that Mega Man Two is secretly the worst NES Mega Man. Oh, you're, you're crazy. I mean, it's not the worst, but... It has I think some three, major design three issues. Is the best. Three and five are the best Mega Mans. We can agree on that, right? Uh, uh, I think I would agree with that. Yeah, but if you think two is worse than one, then we have to have a discussion. I mean, one is Corey's favorite. One is Corey's favorite. One? One. One I is mean, Corey's favorite. Uh... I, you know, I, I have to respect it because I love Corey and it's a good friend of mine. <laughs> but, like, one is, like, it's hard to go back to for me. Uh, I, even music, it's hard for me to go back. I, yeah, the music is not quite as good. That that was what that was Matsumai, right? Yeah, yeah. And uh, no offense to her, but I just don't think, like, it's as catchy as, like, no, There's the some good the stuff in it, though. But, yeah, the later ones do. It's actually amazing to me that... I think every NES Mega Man had a different lead composer because, like, they are pretty consistent in their awesomeness, but yeah, yeah. just, like, so... Uh... Wow, man, this is this is goes on for a while. Um, but, yeah, like, Mega Man 2, like, it's got, like, so many things that if you, like, if you just don't have the game memorized, mm -hmm. they're... they're that they they are going to screw you up. I mean, I I, I I harp on that one boss in the Wily levels that like you have to have enough crash bombs. And if you run out of crash oh, bombs, yeah. then it's just it's over. It's like that is that is that is bad. That is, yeah, that's, that is bad. That's not good. That is bad. But imbalance imbalance is kinda like something that's in almost all the Mega Man NES games. Just like in one mm, area you gotta find Mega it. Man two, like it, it has some it has more like inconsistencies with, uh, in terms of, um, <sighs> like, like enemy weaknesses and like requiring weaknesses and things like that. Like there are, I think maybe some wily forms in some in a later game that maybe requires a certain thing, but you're, it's not as brutal or as like tight of a requirement as as some of the stuff in Mega Man 2. Like it's just All right, well, let's let's focus on this room because <laughs> I can tell that like you need to memorize. Yeah. And I'll read people's comments about Mega Man games because I'm sure everyone's like hating on us for saying Well I didn't say two, Mr. Worst. That that was all you. I don't <laughs> do not think two. Uh, it's that bad. Oh you did the first try here. <laughs> See you just need to concentrate. That's all it is. Um no, I think uh, the one is the one I have. Well, no pun intended. Uh, one I had trouble going back to, but I do, I do enjoy it. I I actually uh, liked one like when I when I started going back to it and replaying it. I did not think that highly of it the first time. By I the way, that finished. flame there, that flame try, very very it? gratuitous. Yeah, it's very salamander, isn't it? Yes. Um, uh, but yeah, uh, I, uh, like I, I, I would say I felt similarly the first time I played through it, but then when I, when I went back to it, I was like, you know what? Like this isn't as, as brutal as it was in my head. Like it's no, but I, I just don't think it's, 
Yeah, I don't know. I think the level design leaves a lot to be desired in one. Just not too. It's... I'm just not too fond of. I like uh, Powered Up, and I'm. Oh never yeah, sad that game was PSG, amazing. Uh, you know, they had plans of remaking all the NES games in Powered Up style, and they just didn't do it because of the sales. Ugh, it's uh, it's a shame. shame. That is a shame. That yeah. that game was one of the most charming games in existence. Mm -hmm. And then, imagine, because then we probably could have had, like, uh, HD remasters of those versions oh. alongside the Legacy Collection. You know, could have the best of both worlds. Because oh, those man. were, like, 2.5D remakes done right, I think. Oh, like, yeah. It's the, among the best, like, remakes of NES-era games. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because, I mean, it really played. becomes its own thing. Yeah. And <laughs> in the best possible way. It's Oh, it's so good. It's so good. Kind of like the Klonoa on Wii, which is now being remade again, or remastered for the uh, collection. I mean, that's another one where, like, it becomes its own thing, and I really, really enjoy it. Isn't the new uh, one kind of... I, have people confirmed that it's, like, uh, very much... In a, I, people were saying, like, it doesn't seem to be directly based on the Wii game. Like people oh, actually, seems... uh, Namco themselves put out the comparison video, stealing me and John's livelihood from us, <laughs> uh, where they compared the different games. Mm -hmm. And for the comparison of one, they didn't use the PlayStation version; they used the Wii version specifically. And so, is it is the Wii version more different or less different from the new one? Uh, it's less different. So, wow. I mean, for the new Look the at... new one, they updated it like the backgrounds and they put more contrast in the colors and stuff. I mean, they've redone a lot of stuff, but the comparison point is the Wii version for one. I am so, really not sure how they're doing this. Like you don't usually see where the background can actually occlude mm -hmm. background, the, 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 the parallax background tiles yeah, like yeah. that. Like normally it's like, clearly there is nothing obscuring it. Maybe that's actually a, I wonder if, like, that thing up there is actually a sprite rather than a tile? Could be. But you'd think it'd be flickering. Cause there's like, hmm. Oh, there's not much flicker in this game. I, I uh -oh. did disable the... the, fl the oh, you, uh, you put the sp uh, sprite limiter on? No, uh, or I mean, I, I kept it, you know, okay. authentic. Uh, uh, this is probably not worth it. Oh, okay. Oh, got power up. I, I don't. I don't have. No, a, you got one up. I. I. Oh my gosh. Yeah, someone. Uh, I was just gonna. Uh, someone's saying that's a huge amount of bank switching, which is probably uh, right. Yeah. I wonder if this guy could hover all the way. Only one way to find out. Don't hit the rock. There we go. Oh, you have to go back so that it spawns the rock. There you go. It's like Super Mario Land. You gotta do this. Yeah, that's good. Whoa! Whoa, whoa, <laughs> whoa! What's <laughs> rotation? Whoa! Just, just be careful. Oh, no. Yeah, exactly. Uh oh. Am I stuck? No. Are you playing on original hardware or mystery? You're playing I, on a mystery right I now. started playing on original hardware, but either yeah. my EverDrive was making a bad connection or uh, or there was like a mapper bug or something. Oh, oh, oh you at I, the very end. I didn't see that there was a... You did so good. I didn't see that, that, it, was, that it was flat at the end. Oh, no. You, know, you have a full uh, power up anyway, so you don't need more. Uh, oh, okay. Um. Oh. By the way, someone was asking me if I'm drinking Mountain Dew. I am not. I bought this gourmet soda called Phillips Spitfire. It's a ginger ale. Um, Is that a Canadian thing? I think so. Uh. Yeah, looks like it. PhilipSoda.com. Check them out. PhilipSoda.com. I'm not being paid to say that either. 
But yeah, it's a fine ginger ale. I, I don't complain. like ginger ale. Do you not like ginger ale because of like the the spicy kind, or do you not like I it just, in like the Canada dry kind? I just, I just, I don't like the you taste. Don't like of any. It. You have to shoot the core. I, I wonder how, I, if I can. Yeah, you didn't. Uh, you didn't really power up her. Uh... Oh, I thought everyone shared. I thought everyone shared that. Oh, I should have told you that. No, that's unfortunately. So, and you get uh, killed if you get squashed like you just did. But yeah, it would have made it a little bit easier if you had her weapon, but uh, totally beatable without. Just very narrow. Opening. Yeah, it's very narrow, right? Alright, make sure to jump now. Oh, it goes the other way too! <laughs> Man, with, uh, without without the power up, that, that might be tough to jump over. Yeah, uh... You just have to do, like, two of them in a row. People are now talking about ginger ale in the chat, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, but yeah. Ginger ale is, is is Aeronautical's favorite soda. Uh, people like strong ginger ale. I I'm fine with strong ginger ale. Uh, I do enjoy a good can of dry though. I, I don't really drink so much soda, but uh, yeah, I prefer like ginger huh. ale if I have to. I I, I wonder if I could have easily finished that before he even did the roll because it only took one shot. Uh, after he, uh, came back out. More of a sprite person. Man, I, 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 I got, I, I, I tried to, I tried, I mean, it was, it was a fountain drink, so I don't, okay. I don't know, but I, I tried Sprite Zero on a whim the other day, okay. and it was disgusting. I, but I, oh, you didn't like that. Yeah. Yeah. You were trying that space cola. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it was not good. Yeah, it didn't like. It was. It was. Have not... you seen? Uh, if you go online, you can order pixel cola, or like not. pixel flavored yeah, cola. Yeah. I don't know what that means, but if you go on Coca-Cola.com, I guess or whatever, you can buy like a four cans of you, pixel you, you cola. You can't buy it but... in stores. No, it's not. In stores, it's only online, from as far as I can tell. Yeah, Cor Corey said he tried the, uh, the 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 space or galaxy or whatever. I called. don't know what space tastes like, yeah. other than like what what that tastes like. Yeah, I mean, Cor so. Corey said he tried it too, and it was it was not good. It's it's not good. Yeah, it is not good. Yeah, like uh, I have this weird superstition when it comes to soda, where I think like dark like colas and stuff are worse for you than clear sodas. Hmm. And that's not true at all. They're yeah. all equally bad for you. <laughs> uh, yeah, I just I, can I prefer to drink things I can see through. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I can understand where that comes from. <laughs> yeah. I don't know where it comes from. I don't know who gave me this idea. But yeah, I, I, I suspect though that the, the problem with with that uh with that Sprite Zero was actually it just was it needed needed to be uh, oh, the tap was bad. Yeah, like the it was, was just. Yeah, it was probably. not. I, I suspect because it, it it tasted almost like seltzer water, which I hate. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of seltzer water either. It's too salty. Oh, I mean, it's it's like I never really thought of it as salty. Maybe maybe that's part of it. Like it to, I just don't like it. I've I've always thought of it in terms of it's just like. It is, uh, it's like water, but carbonated with no flavor. <laughs> and you know what I really hate, though, which always brings people into a pissing match with me is uh, Dr. Pepper. I hate Dr. Pepper. I think well, Dr. Pepper is one of the most vile, disgusting creations. I mean, it, it is. I, I would say probably, I, I would suspect most people like Dr. Pepper, but it is divisive. My mom doesn't like Dr. Pepper. Oh, it, it is so disgusting. I, I, I love Dr. Pepper. But, you know, you said that space-flavored Coke tasted like Dr. Pepper. It did not taste like Dr. Pepper. 
It tastes like it has like this weird like cinnamon cherry kind of thing to it. I um, mean, Dr. Pepper does have a, a cherry-ish taste, yes. And I I like you cherry. like cheer wine. Cheer wine is good, uh, but I cannot I cannot stand Dr. Pepper. Well, I I love Dr. Pepper. Uh, most people do, I and mean, I I can't uh, can't sanction that buffoonery. Is, is it is it as common in Norway as it is elsewhere? Like got Dr. Pepper, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, my my Dr. Pepper probably has the uh, the the best uh, name, like the best like bootleg versions. Dr. Pip. Yeah, well, then, then there's Mr. Pibb. I mean, I, I'm not saying, like, well, best flavor. Mystery. It's not a doctor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Mr. Pibb. Uh, there's, uh, there, there's Dr. P like, like, a lot of them is just, like, the, the local, like, uh, the, the local uh, grocery store brand variants. Uh, you know, so, like, around here, there, there's Dr. Perky. <laughs> oh, Dr. Perky. Um, okay. Uh, I've seen like Doctor uh, uh, Doctor Thunder. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember there was a really good one that a friend had in college. Uh, uh, can I jump you have to here? ride the meteors. They're, they're hard to jump on. <laughs> yeah. By the way, uh, I saw someone mention in the chat that you haven't really powered up the other characters. This is true. You need to power up uh, Jenny and Deadeye. Oh. Because they do not share. So, yeah. yeah, I keep... When you see I, peace, just... Uh, yeah, I keep, for, keep forgetting to do that. There will be times later. But, but like you say, you lose it when you game over anyway. The game is uh, pretty generous with one-ups, though. Yeah, I forget. Do you lose it? Someone, someone in the chat probably knows better than me at this point. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I, I really like this stage though. There's a lot of different gimmicks in this stage, but I think they're pretty interesting. Like climbing the spaceships uh, to traverse uh, this part with the meteors. It's hard to predict, but I really like the idea that they put in here. Her, her shot actually kills those toads in one hit, which. I think the... Yeah, because they're, they're the weakest enemy in the game. Yeah, but, like, I don't think that the the robot... Um, I don't think... Actually, you know, I haven't tried this guy. Oh, this guy has a spread shot. Yep. So his special... His power-up is that he can climb on walls while he's blinking, which is not useful on this stage whatsoever. It's actually the least used power-up in the whole game. There you go. I got a good meteor. I got another good meteor. I, I keep feeling like they're going to hurt me, but they don't. Yeah, all right. Or even when you get to the top of the screen, they don't hurt you. No. You get to the bottom, though. I'm, I'm kind of getting flashbacks to uh, one of the last bosses in Act Razor 2, which I played through a few months ago. Wait, <laughs> scrolling. Uh, well, th there was like a bunch of rocks and... Uh... Wow, there's like... Nothing happening here. What? Yeah. Oh, the until end, then. Down, then you have to jump. Until then, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, I. Uh, uh, what was I saying? The. Uh, yeah, like the one of the bosses near the end of Act Razor Two, and uh, it was like in between these like giant falling rocks, and it was. The the first version wasn't that bad once I figured it out, but the um, whoop, uh, the the rematch version was well th that boss wasn't difficult, but then there was a follow up boss fight in the same room where you didn't fight that boss among those meteors before, and that was really brutal. I see. Ah. Uh, uh. I jumped too soon. It's pretty fast, though. The scrolling, I, right? I, I start, yeah, really fast. I started thinking that I was going back and forth, and so I thought maybe I needed to jump off at an earlier point. But that, 
I'm not sure if that's No, the I mean you always have to jump off during the slowdown period, basically. So they do give you like a second to uh, to jump. The levels are are surprisingly long. Which... Yeah, they get. I mean, these are the planets. Uh, you'll see soon what happens. But like, uh, you're at the end of this one now, though. So it's not much longer. This is the longest stage, though, I think, of the planet. Oh. This... Oh, yeah. <laughs> I kind of got... Whoa! I kind of got lucky actually ducking, because I was just like, maybe I should duck, <laughs> before I actually saw anything. And there you go. You knew exactly what to do. Warg! Ah. Oh. Ugh. Yeah, okay, I can see why All this, the way is, back. this is quite long, yeah. Yeah. It's a fun little section, though. At least there's this not straight, a lot of... People are saying this could be a Sonic stage, just design. <laughs> yeah, it's... Uh, yeah, yeah. Why, why has no one rom-hacked this, this game into Sonic? <laughs> Sonic and his friends? Like, it could be a... Uh... Yeah, I guess it could be kind of like a version of Sonic, Sonic ATM or whatever it's called. You know, I I'm, I, I apologize yeah. to anyone who might have wanted to watch this live. You can you can check the Giant Bomb archives. But we were on a Giant Bomb game show this past week. Oh. Uh, it, it popped in my mind, though, because I'm talking about Sonic ROM hacks, and the first thing we had to play was Samari. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Um, but Like the NES Samari, you mean? Yeah. Oh, is there a yeah. non-NES Samari? No, nah, so someone made a Sonic hack, Sonic 1 hack on Mega Drive to be Samari, so they hacked, like, Mario into oh, Sonic okay. 1. Yeah, it's a really good hack. Like, it's a very good hack. Yeah, but this was not good. <laughs> no, Samari is not Oh, bad. Did it, did it feel bad? Yeah, I believe that. Okay, she's full power now. Yeah, full power. Let's, let's, let's try this out. Yeah, so got the antennas and stuff. Yeah, if you get shot though, it cancels out. Yeah. So you gotta be a little bit strategic where you're standing. Though if you look closely at the pattern, there are places to stand where you don't get hit by them at least, but Yeah, that's I don't know if I can how easily I can pull that off. Uh we have a Canadian watcher here, so same area as me. Uh, Buddy Scotch sends five Canadian dollars. Uh, can't wait to lose the higher frequencies of my hearing so that I can skip using an upscaler and finally just use a CRT. <laughs> the ring drives me crazy. I cannot hear it anymore. I, I can uh, hear it, but... Uh, I... Uh, if I'm going to do this, I should probably use Bucky since he's stronger, supposedly. Um, oh, first one. Um, I mean, I, I can, I can, I can hear it, but, oh, uh, like, it, it's so funny to me, because, like, there was, there was this person who was much younger, you know, like, early 20s, I think, left a comment recently, like, kind of worried about their CRT, like, oh my gosh, it's, like, a lot worse than I thought it would be, and I'm like, we just... Like no one, no one complained about it back in the day because, like, I mean, we didn't, we had no choice. Yeah, I remember my TV in my child bedroom, like, had small CRT there, obviously, and like, uh, it rang like crazy. I remember. Yeah. Uh, just like high pitched, and yeah, that was just how it was. So. Yeah, I, I uh, back in uh, back in the day, I, I used. Oh, watch out for laser. Oh. Yeah, I see after the first thing is gone, he get, does quite different attacks. Mm -hmm. Um, <laughs> I used to, uh, I used to think that I, uh, like, I don't, I don't know if I would say superpower, but like, I, 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 I thought I almost like had like a sixth sense that, that like a CRT was on. Yeah. Like... 
Of course, we didn't call them CRTs back then. They were just TVs. But like, like in the in like the classroom, for example, like you know, if you had if you had TV in the classroom, and like the teacher, you know, not being technically inclined, would would leave it on, and uh, but like the screen was black, so they didn't know that it was that it was still ah. Oh! It was still on, mm. and I would I would just be like I'd be like staring at the TV. And I'm just like I know that TV is on. And it was it was because of the high pitch, but I was just like I, I just like never really thought about like why I had this sense that it, that the TV was on. I was like I know that TV is on, but there's nothing on it. But I know it's on. And I like was like does does no one else know this? Am I the only one who knows this? That, that I'm sure they could all hear it too, but they just like I'm probably the only person that actually thought about it. <laughs> right. To get to yeah, if you break that up. So, so like the Jenny first now. time he does the dash, he like really yeah. revs up, but like I don't think he. He doesn't do afterwards. Yeah. Like that. So like after he does the, you basically like if you wanted to jump out and get like one shot in after the laser, you could. You can shoot upwards though, so you can shoot. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Like you can get one shot in. Oh. Now we can use Jenny and just like if I. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Good point. At her eye. <laughs> That's it. Shout out says, I can tell CRT is on because the hairs on my arm raise when I'm near one like the yeah, spy, yeah. like a spidey sense. <laughs> Feels a super chat from Mike Cherry. Great, my mind just cleared it out. It cleared away the opening to the cartoon. Yeah, the cartoon has a fantastic uh, theme song. If you haven't heard it, after the stream, go on YouTube and listen to it. Uh, okay, I was just making sure we didn't miss any super chats. So this is like the 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 you insert into the cartoon. This kid is like a yeah, kid. Yeah, I suppose so. It's like yeah, it's the uh, normal kid that's kind of our uh, introduction to the world of Bucky. The, the the isekai, as they would call it these days. Yeah. He's like a computer whiz, and he makes, like, stuff. He's a smart kid. Have you ever seen, like, this just randomly popped in my head uh, for no reason, other than talking about cartoons. Uh, on our backloggery streams, we've got, like, a bunch of I don't think this is available for YouTube yet, but it, I think it might come eventually. But th there's this program called Mix It Up where you can make like all sorts of like really fancy like stream alerts, like when people do certain things in the chat or push a certain button on Twitch, it can do something on the stream. And Drum has been pulling a lot of the alerts from some show that I never heard of called right. uh, Power Team, I think it is. It's like all of these like C tier NES characters in it. Uh, it, hmm. it looks Power like a team. Yeah, I think that's what it's called. Power team. It's not, it's not Captain Power. Or Captain N is what you're thinking of, right? No, Captain Power was like. Uh, oh, Captain. Pa the weren't live the, action. Were those like sort of like semi interactive VHS tapes or yeah, something like yeah. that? Well, I actually have uh, one of yeah, those think... somewhere. But I, I, I've never it watched a TV it. Show or something. Yeah. Someone's asking if we're gonna get the Avenging Spirit re-release from Retrobit. You know, my biggest problem with Retrobit is not anything to do. Like they do great work uh, reprinting, uh, great build quality, but they never include the soundtracks on CD. And they keep picking up these games that are revered for their soundtracks mm. and don't preserve that part of it, which like grinds my gears so much. Uh, it's like, I... If you're gonna have these games with great soundtracks, at least put it on, uh, not vinyl, because putting a digital soundtrack on vinyl is stupid anyway. And I'll die on that hill. <laughs> but like, put it on a CD. 
I, 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 I mean, I, I, CDs are my most wanted, like, like if you include a CD like that, if you don't include a CD, I'm not going to spend a extra collector's edition. Mm -hmm. If you do, I might. Yeah. And the thing is that, like, because there's going to be eventually some people in chat saying, like, haven't used a CD in 10 years, this and that. Like, you and I are from a generation, especially, you know, me. I've been collecting video game music on CDs since the 90s, official releases. Mm -hmm. So, like, this is a continued passion of mine. And yeah. just, like, a couple of days ago, I got a huge box from Japan with CD soundtracks. Yeah, that's right here next to me. Yeah, I, I, like... I love CD soundtracks. I, I, I get them for games that I want to get them for when I can. Like, that's what I like about um, the... Like, I, I wish this was offered with more... Uh, more for more games. It was like the... Uh, like the, the, it's really the ones, the limited run releases that have the uh, Tom Dubois covers. They yeah. always do a vert. Like th there's like a, this middle tier that mm -hmm. like, it comes with like a soundtrack and like maybe a poster or something, but it's like the, the price is just extra enough to where I feel like I'm not overpaying for goodies. I didn't want. Yeah. yeah. I'm paying the right price for a game plus a soundtrack. You know what I mean? Uh, I like that middle tier where it's like like a fifty-ish dollar thing. I want to say, like I really like that middle tier. Yeah. And I wish it would. Ha I wish it would happen with more releases because I very rarely spring for like the full-on collector's edition. Yeah, I do think often that like video game music gets like kind of shafted into this kind of weird purgatory of collecting and. You know, the CDs and such should definitely be sold by itself, because some people are really into the soundtracks, not necessarily so much the game. And I think there's a there's a big enough market to... Even for companies like Limited Run, who I work for, I think there's a lot more that can be done um, with uh, music, with CDs. I just think mm. it comes down to how it's promoted, how it's sold. You know, some, something that I've thought a lot more about lately, though, uh, is like how the music was sourced. Uh, yeah. Especially which... for, for older games, which is like, yeah. I mean, are you just like downloading like the old Zophar rips or something? You know, like, mm. I hope not. <laughs> no, so, I mean, I can only speak for the stuff that I produced myself. Uh, I mean, that is done uh, through a uh, direct source to the consoles. And. Uh, usually, you know, you can use an EverDrive and an NSF file, of course, because that's just a ROM file hack to only have the music information in it. Right. Although so, some but... of the NSFs, there are glitches in... Whoa. Some. But some the... NSFs. And I don't know how to identify, like, if you don't have access to the original hardware i don't know how you can identify because like i actually i end up stumbling across one uh i can't remember what it was um it, it was something that i hadn't played before and i was listening to the nsf and i was like oh i think it i think it was super spy hunter okay and like i had i have not played that much of the game remember you can fly with uh with oh yeah robot. um Oh, the power is retained when you die. By the way. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I guess I should really be paying attention to make sure everyone is powered up. Um, well, Jenny is powered up now, so it's just the, the other guy. Yeah, and the kid. Oh, yeah, the kid. Um, but, uh, yeah, so... Oh! <laughs> uh, what? Well, while it's safe here, I should play around with that. Make sure, like, if I, like... Okay, I can, like, stop. Well, myself. you can hold forward when you, while you store it up. Oh, yeah. Um, but, it, yeah, it was Super Spy Hunter. I, um... Like, I, I, I've not played that much of the game, but, like, you know, that first level of music's really good. I was like, oh, I want to use this and... Uh... In a video mm -hmm. 
And uh, then I was like, oh, like, so I, I downloaded the NSF and I was like, this doesn't sound, something sounds suspicious here. I should have used that P on one of the other characters. <laughs> oh, well, I, how would I know that I'm going to get them in the same room? Oh, you just click so. Uh, I've only got these oh, wait, two characters. Oh yeah, right you now. have to save them again. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry, I'm I'm the one not paying attention right now. Yeah, you are in the prison because you were captured. So, see, one thing that also. I'm oh oh no! Up. You gotta be kidding me. Uh, one thing that also grinds my gear about this whole thing because, like, you know me, tried. Like, I've been involved with video game music since. You know, the late 90s, early 2000s at this point, working with composers and doing a lot of different things in video game music it was how I started my career in video games. And one thing that really just I can't get behind of this, you know, I think it's okay to put uh, soundtracks on vinyl because it's a collect, you know, people collect vinyl these days. They think that's fun. I don't, but, um, you know, for whatever reason. If I reasons, bought a vinyl, it would, uh, it would be for the art. Yeah, I mean, there's re different reasons to pick up vinyl, and I, I mean, I, yeah, I never have, but I mean, I'm saying like, yeah. I would, like, that would be yeah. my reason. Yeah, and that's fine. They're like, I, I am not against people putting video game soundtracks on vinyl and buying them. That's not what I'm saying. But what I am very much against, and I've had a huge argument with one of the people who ran one of the bigger labels. I'm not gonna say which, uh, but not too long ago, actually, I put a tweet out about this, and one of the people who owns one of these companies came at me. Uh, in DMs and was like, CDs are an outdated format. And like, you know, doesn't matter anymore. People want vinyl. And I was just like, so you gotta sit there and sell a vinyl and tell me like CDs are outdated and not like useful anymore? Like, idiot. Like, <laughs> so. Like, CDs. I mean, it's. I mean, it's. It's, it's uncompressed. It's like, it's compact, it's digital, it's fine. Like, uh, there's nothing wrong with putting something on. The thing is, and there's in some cases, you can put uh, a soundtrack on vinyl, and only vinyl, because the uh, CD rights are with another company still. And in those cases, like, there's not much that can be done, obviously, for copyright reasons. But some people actually have full right to the soundtracks and don't put them out on CD, but just because they don't want to. And, you know, even if it's just a pressing of, like, if they make a thousand vinyls and make 200 CDs and sell out those CDs, or whatever, right? But they just don't want to do that. And it annoys me so much, especially with these newer, fantastic indie soundtracks, indie game soundtracks, that they only come out on vinyl. And I'm like, I would totally buy the soundtrack if it was on a CD that I can put in my collection, mm -hmm. in my CD shelf, uh, which can, is neat and compact, alphabetized. There it fits. Vinyl, I have no use for it. I'm not going to just sit down and put a vinyl on yeah. uh, in my car. Uh, I can, of course, rip a digital uh, Bandcamp copy and put it on a CDR, but I like to support the artist and just like have it in my collection, and I'm not going to buy it. Yeah, I, I like to have it in my copy. collection, too. Like, yeah. I... So, if... What... What's the deal with these guys? Like, they don't seem to do anything until I shoot them. Oh, they're just other prisoners. Oh, dang it! Has anyone bought an album on a media stick? Uh, I bought, when I was at a concert in Japan, there was a band that I really like, and they had uh, an EP on a USB stick. Uh, it came out on a CD later, because they still make CDs in Japan, believe it or not. And I bought the CD, but I didn't remember being at the concert and picking up a USB stick with, like, the album on it. Which, uh, I mean, even Nintendo sometimes still makes CD soundtracks. They do. In Japan! Uh, club, club, oh, yeah. I mean, well, in Japan, uh, Columbia, that's their distribution and uh, manufacturing. Uh, like the Zeldas and stuff. Oh, you. Too bad you don't have holy water, so you could just check. Yeah! <laughs> But, um, you know, I, I, I was actually looking just today to see if, like, any recent Nintendo releases had, uh, CD soundtracks. Are you using VGMDB like you should try? Uh, I, I was not looking there. I, I probably should you have. You have to. 
I was one of the originals at the VGMDP. I don't think that's a great resource. It was made. So for it's people it's like... still it's still kept up. Yeah. 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 Okay. VGMDP yeah. is still very much kept up. I mean, I still contribute to it. That was part of the original wave of people when it was being set up. Right. Uh, and I even hosted their podcast back in the day before. I don't even know if it was called podcast back then. It's so long ago now. But uh, yeah, yeah. And it's still being kept up. Uh, it's just that most people, despite collecting video game music, tend not to refer to it. But yeah. Um, yeah, I should. Because I, I, was, I was looking around to like, oh, is there like a Kirby and the Forgotten Land soundtrack out? Because, like, they, no. they, they've they done... They've done soundtracks for all of the other recent Kirby games. Yeah, yeah. So I'm I was sure kind of... Come. I don't think it's out it. now, though. Uh, the last like, there's an eight-disc of... one for, uh, for Star Allies. It's insane. Yeah. Uh, there was the Animal Crossing set that came out a while ago. There was the uh, Skyward Sword HD what? that came out. Uh, soundtrack set. Oh yeah, got to the boss finally. Yep. Yeah, don't touch that beam. She's being corrupted. Uh, I assume I'm not supposed to shoot her? Or am I? Oh, uh, oh I, I guess the, the bad guy is... went away. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the website we're talking about is vgmdb.net. And it's, like, it's got, like, all of, like, the real versions, all of the hacked versions. Well, uh, or not, not, not hacked. I meant bootleg. Yeah, yeah. So it does. Like have you can bootleg. look up like info on all that stuff. Though. Yeah, because that was a big problem. That's one of the reasons why VGMDB was being made back then. Uh, we were a team on uh, Gaming Force or Game Force. I forget what the forum was called, uh, where we were sharing uh, video game soundtrack information and whatnot. It was just a forum thing. And then uh, decided to make uh, Secret Squirrel decided to make VGMDB as a resource because people were picking up uh, at the time people were picking up a lot of releases from companies like Ever Anime. I, I like, did too. I I, I yeah. did not know about like I actually ended up separating like my fake ones. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> uh, I I put them on a different shelf, but like for years and years and years, I thought I had legit ones. Yeah. Oh, a lot of people did. And I remember when finally VGNDB went up, and like the first like months of fanfare around it, people were like super angry because basically, uh, you, you, know, you ruined the illusion resource. for them. <laughs> yeah, so a lot of people had gigantic uh, CD collections that they had purchased at like their local mall, at like an anime shop, you know, and all this stuff. And here, you know, this website comes out and says. These are all bootlegs, and we have people like, you know, threatening and, you know, being rather angry at this and like contesting it. It's like, no, no, they must have gotten the rights because they have this track on it as a bonus track. It's like, yeah, they just added whatever MP3s they found, and in some cases. I mean, I assume though that like most of them are the same sound quality because I assume they're just rips of the real ones. Yeah, it depends. Some were not. Uh, for sure, they were not. Uh, there was like Sun... Sun May, I think was another one. And uh, yeah, and some are just copies, you know, straight up. And depending on how you feel about that stuff, some people did care. They are just like, eh, whatever. It, it, it was definitely disappointing when I learned about it, but it was like so long ago that I made those purchases that... Eh. Oh, yeah. You know, nowadays those bootlegs aren't well, People don't produce uh, CDs after us anymore, so it's you know, it's just a different world. But uh, you know, yeah, the the whole bootleg thing uh, was an interesting, uh, interesting time. Luckily, uh, most of mine are real. Yeah, I always uh, sun me. Yeah, I think it, it was something of that the other company. Than most of the bootlegs did. The I, I don't know if there was a bootleg of it, but but li luckily, you know the the most valuable CD I have is definitely authentic, which is my which uh, one Mystical Ninja Star and Goemon. Uh, that's very. Those are worth like yeah hundreds of dollars. Oh, uh, that one. That I mean, and keep in mind this was like probably like three years ago. I 
three or four years ago, I discovered how valuable it was. Yeah, it's worth it's worth like at the time, like it would probably be hard to find a buyer in the U.S. But yeah. like at the time, like on the Japanese market, it was worth like a thousand dollars. Yep. No, all that stuff, and especially is uh, after Am like. Am I like uh, accidentally skipping something? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I think I just skip power ups and stuff. If I'm not mistaken. So. Because like I keep going forward and then back. Yeah. Like, I just want to make sure that I'm not, like, locking myself out from from getting some of my allies back. Uh, we got a super chat, by the way, from uh, Stu Blasinski. Oh, uh, thank you. As someone that spends 1k plus on video game soundtracks whenever I travel to Japan, <laughs> this conversation is very reaffirming. Uh, I will admit, I also spend upwards of amounts of like five hundred dollars on video game soundtrack sometimes when I go to Japan. <laughs> and when I worked in Japan, I just like picked up so much stuff um, over the years. So I have a pretty and I also collect the uh, Dojin albums, which is like uh, fan arrangements. I uh, um, uh, I bought several used soundtracks when Corey and I went to Japan. Which yeah, is, like, something that, like, I'd never really done before, but, like, I mean, like, Book Off and Trader, like, they... Yeah, it's they... not too, it's not too, uh, in Japan, you can be kind of safe on yes. doing so. Going out to a flea market here, it's just, like, yeah. oh. you know, whose dog ate the CD and where did it come out? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I got, yeah. I got several soundtracks um, over Someone was there. asking if the VGMDD podcast episodes are still hosted somewhere. I don't think so. I mean, it was back in 2010, 2009, maybe. Oh, maybe they were they later, were called podcasts by then. <laughs> yeah, they probably were. Um, they were fun to make. Uh, I mean, it was kind of... At the time, I was... Um, it was kind of like my first career, sort of. I consider now that I have two careers, because I left the industry for a bit and came back. Uh, but like, uh, yeah, it was while I was like with Destructoid and stuff like that, that I was on that podcast. So it's a different time. And, uh, funny enough, I got just uh, trouble with the same people that, uh, are angry at me now, so, in the industry. So, <laughs> I think some things never change. Except the Amico that never comes out, so that never changes. How do you uh, get in there? Hmm. See if there's any other questions that we missed, because we've been talking so much I forgot to check the chat. I'm very sorry to people. This has been a hap haphazard uh, stream, because you and I keep talking, so... The, it's so much easier when we're in the same room, So you, you, don't, you don't think we missed any super super chats? Let me... No, I don't think so. I think we, we caught all of them. Me... If we missed any, please let me know in the chat. Uh, I will scroll through and find them. I or you can send it in the game. Did you get the one from Buddy Scotch? Uh, a big uh, reason I... why I collect CDs is because I have a headphone hi-fi setup and like having a physical version of the best quality sound. Yeah, yeah. Uh, legitimate reason. So I guess we missed that. The, uh, there was also Mike Sherry who said, "Great, my mind just cleared away the opening." Yeah, that's what we did yeah, read. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I must have been distracted while playing the game. Yeah, and people are discussing like vinyl over CD, and I also contest. I don't think in today's world how we master and mix stuff, it really does not make a difference. Like, you can pick up a CD and be pretty sure that you're gonna hear every hiss and a nook of that music as well. Like, I, I really do not believe that vinyl has any advantage in today, especially with video game music, which is digital to begin with. It is so stupid. Of course it is. I mean, audio is yourself. always analog by the time you hear it. Yeah. Um, but the sword, I mean, how it's being recorded and stuff, I don't think it... I really I mean, there is a... I mean... I mean, the original digital source has to have a, like, sample rate, right? Like, it, it cannot yeah. just be a pure, continuous analog stream. Like, I don't know what that sample rate is, but, like... Mm -hmm. But I, I, I don't I don't mean to poo-poo it. I mean, you know, people, you know, hear their warm... I mean, I don't think people... When people... When people go for, 
when people say they like the vinyl sound, I don't think they're necessarily... Like... I, I don't think they're necessarily going for like, oh, I want to hear the source I mean, as authentically as possible, you know? There's an ambiance and there's an atmosphere to a vinyl that obviously comes with it. Yes. So I'm just talking about like sound quality itself on a CD to vinyl for gay music. Uh, unless, like, maybe one of these labels has such incredible mastering that like, it makes it different. But having produced, unfortunately, and more vinyls than I wish I had. And contributing to this <laughs> myself, uh, I just don't, I don't know, like, uh, I, I don't see it, but that's me. Uh, some people are asking how I feel about people collecting modern cassettes now. I mean, that's nostalgia, that's completely nostalgia driven, right? It's uh, gotta be, right? I think it's fun, because uh, I like the form factor of a cassette, because I used to collect, you know, I still collect Commodore 64 games uh, on cassette and whatnot, so I like that. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I, do I have any cassettes of game music from recently? I have Snatcher on cassette, just for fun. I mean, you I mean, know, know like, what, what's like so interesting to me about vinyl is, like, yeah. it wasn't all that long ago. Like, it, it might have been a little bit before the, the vinyl craze but i can't remember for sure um where i like because like growing up like we like the the record player was used like mostly for christmas music okay and like like other music that my parents had was on, I mean, you know me. I'm like not that into music outside of soundtracks. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, so like I wasn't really buying anything, but like the other music that my parents had, like it was on cassette tape. And like mm -hmm. in my head, I always thought that cassette tapes were considered to have been the successor to CDs or uh, to records, to vinyl. Um, uh. And later I learned, like, oh, that's not really the case. It was just kind of yeah. like, it was more like the Game Boy <laughs> to your to your NES, right? Yeah, that like, had to do with, it was like, an, form factor. It was, it was the form factor, yeah. Walkman. You know, Walkman was huge when we were kids. Yeah, yeah. It, was, it, was the, it was the form factor. So, yeah, I always thought, like, oh, like, tapes were the next thing. But no, yeah, that's... Walkman was basically the iPod of our generation, Yeah, right? that, that was right. that was just my perception as because that's what my what my parents bought. Now, so this is where I'm going to reveal myself as a complete hypocrite, though, try because I do collect laser discs, and I love watching laser discs. <laughs> but, <laughs> Which is... I mean, there's a lot of content that's only on laser disc, or... Absolutely, and I, I have a, you know, I have a ton of uh, Japanese laser disc concerts and stuff that have never been released on DVD. Uh, mm. Even VHS in some cases, and I have a, I have um, an almost complete set of every uh, recording of a video game concert that's ever been made. Uh, I'm only missing some Western stuff like Witcher 3 Blu-rays and whatnot. But I have like a gigantic collection of video game music concerts recorded on physical media, and some of them are like laser discs, and it's just amazing to watch that stuff. Uh, on a good CRT with a nice big laser disc player that just takes like ages to load your film. I feel like there should be a way to get up into that nook, but it seems... I don't really need to. I know, but like it just seems like it would be a, an amazing safe spot if I could. Uh, Stu Blazinski is back. Uh, I like listening to vinyl because I'm more engaged with the listening experience. I mean, that, that's... Over makes listening. That's the atmosphere I was talking about, right? Yeah, that's totally legit. Uh, yeah, that, that... I'm not against the vinyls. It should be noted. I'm against the idea that you put something only on vinyl and not a CD yes. in the video game realm today. Yes. 
Yeah. I, I, I agree with that completely. Like, why... I, I, you, you can't convince me that they wouldn't sell. There, there, there are enough of us out there, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I mean, I've worked with many different like video game companies, and like from both from like a limited pressing standpoint to larger publishers. And no, the CDs sell just fine. There's no real argument for not doing so. The, the vinyls do sell more. There's no contest today because the vinyl market is so strong right now. That's amazing and, to me that it's caught on the way it has. Yeah, yeah, but that's great. I mean, I mean yeah, 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 media, yeah. I'm not going to say against any physical media surviving. No, I, I'm them. just saying that, that to hear that they sell better than CDs, though, is, is like, a little, that's a little bit surprising to me. Boinoich. Say, Brazilian. Uh, what, like, what's, what's the vinyl culture like in Japan, though? Like, is it, because, like, this, they still love CDs. Yeah, so th it's not as strong there. Uh, you can still, I mean, there are, it's, it's like, so Japanese audio files are a little bit different, I find, uh, in that they're, they are way more on the actual, like, quality of vinyl and, like, to be mm. much more into, like, the, like, the wiring of their setup and stuff. Yeah, they'll be much more into the setup itself and just, like, the, the, the like, the culture of vinyl, whereas I find, like, in, I shouldn't say it's a hipsterish kind of thing, because it's totally not in the U.S. It's a legitimate uh, venture in the U.S., uh, held up by many different types of people over lots of ages. But, like, um, in the U.S., I find it to be a much more kind of specific to your genre and your kind of band and things like that, whereas in Japan, whenever I talk people into vinyl, uh, it was much more just about, like, the hi-fi kind of setup. I mean, you know, I, I, I've always thought, like, in Japan where, you know, unless you live, like, out in the country, like, like, it's got to be so hard to have any kind of good sound setup because you'll be, like, disturbing your neighbors. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's probably true. I mean, <laughs> yeah, well, it depends on where, like, yeah, in Tokyo, definitely, right? Mm. Uh, but, um, I mean, there's vinyl clubs and vinyl cafes and stuff. Uh, I went to one that was, like, in Chiba. So, I mean, it's a thing there, but I feel like the people who are into vinyl in Japan never life left it so to speak like they were there already mm. in the 80s and just like they just stayed with it and then like when uh, we're doing these video game soundtracks on vinyl a lot of them don't transfer to Japan at all like there's very little interest of releasing it in Japan on that format mm -hmm. uh, where it's you know CDs will still get a uh, get a sale there so right yeah like um I've forgotten what I was going to say. Um, hey, you totally forgot, huh? I've yep, never heard I've, it this quiet. Yep, I've totally forgot. I, I'm distracted by the, the Mega Man blocks. Yeah, yeah. This is one of the most annoying sections. You're not at the most annoying section of the game yet, though. Is this like the last level? It's like super long? No. Or? <laughs> no. It just changed to a linear uh, process now after the planets. You're right. not even. You're like halfway, maybe. Oh wow! It's so a big game. It, so this is this is no guarantee I'll be moving on to anything else this stream. Underbulge sends in five bucks, saying he was the guy browsing in the wide, <laughs> the wide, the widescreen sec VHS section at Media Play. So, yeah. I posted this question to John recently on a Patreon video about like. What was the benefits of, like, a widescreen release on VHS back then? Like, whoa. Well, I, you know, I, I, I've, I, I've actually, I actually brought it up, like, just a week or two ago, I think. But I've, I've like, brought this up a couple of times on um, stream where, like, like on DVD, mm -hmm. 
and like late VHS. Like I was buying widescreen because it's like, well, like if you're, if you're in the know, like, like, you know, I think the, the, I think, you know, the, the general consensus was like, you know, most people were, were dummies who didn't know that like, you're like missing most of the picture. If you don't get widescreen, like, like, y you know, uh, and like, so like, I, I, I was like, oh, I, I got to get the widescreen DVD and everything. And like, I actually just like got rid of, a, you know, just kind of whittled down. Cause I'm like not super passionate about like physical movie media anyway. Right. Um, uh, like I got rid of a bunch of DVDs cause I, I was like, you know, I am never going to, uh, like watch these movies in a widescreen DVD format because I, I, I feel like, oh, here we go. Um, it's the power of the kid. Um, I, I just, I feel like the, like DVD looks perfect. A good DVD looks perfect on a CRT. Right, yeah. like you don't, but the, but if you're watching on a CRT, like I, I feel like that's the only context I would really care to look at a DVD these days. Like I don't want to look at a DVD on a modern TV because it looks all macro blocked and stuff. Yeah. Um. So I feel if I feel like if I'm going to watch a DVD on a CRT today, like I want, I want it to look the best for that viewing environment, even though, yes, you are missing, of course, part of the picture. And, yeah. and, and that wasn't my perspective back then. Cause it's like, Oh, I want to see the entire movie. Like I'll feel like I'm missing some, something if I don't see the entire frame. But, uh, But now it's like, well, I, I would want the DVD itself to look as good as possible on my CRT. So I would actually rather watch a full screen version of a DVD on a CRT. But overall, I would prefer to watch, you know, a widescreen 4K HDR stream or UHD Blu-ray. Yeah, yeah. Most of the time, I would rather. Well, is it, like, it would only be for like a nostalgia. Me, though. Huh? Like on DVD, like on DVD some stuff, it had to be like an anamorphic widescreen, though. Right, but I mean, what's your what's your point? No, I mean, I just like you it, know, remember the Star Wars DVDs, for example. Oh, uh, came with the, uh, they're old super version. wide, yeah. Yeah. But like on a CRT, though, like you are with widescreen, though, you are reducing your clarity. Because you are still limited by that 4-3 form factor, essentially. Right? Yeah. So you're losing clarity, but you're gaining the entire picture. This is the most annoying part of the game, by the way, in my opinion. Oh, there's actually one other part that uh, uh, I don't like. I mean, well, up to that oh, point, it seemed like there was... it now, so I guess we found the secret. To I, the I found a safe-ish spot. <laughs> yeah. I did get hit uh, by wait. one, okay. one, one rock. I didn't know we could just do this. <laughs> All right. Well, well, now we can't do it because these you can't shoot. That's tight. I remember why I got back into um, collecting VHS recently, and I was surprised. Like, I pick up VHS sometimes uh, in Japan of like stuff again that's never been released and anything else. Mm -hmm. So then I'll pick up the VHS. But I was surprised to see that like he picks up like. Uh, it's stuff that I like too, like B movies, oh, like sure. martial arts yeah, films. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. I mean, it, VHS. I mean, I, I, I've kind of been it. into, like, I, I lightly collect VHS, like, like just from thrift stores, like where you can get yeah, it for yeah. like a dollar or whatever. Um, 
But I, uh, I, I don't like watch them. <laughs> but like, I like to have them. Like, for example, like I recently found a thrift store. They had every single uh, James Bond movie, except oh, for like yeah. three okay. on VHS. And like, that was like, that is like super nostalgic for me. Cause like me and, you know, being a friend back in the day, like we, uh, you know, we, we would just like put like a V like he had over time. He, he had like a complete bond, uh, VHS collection himself. And like just all the time, we would just like put one of them on the background while uh, we were playing games and stuff at his house. And like, so like bond on VHS is very nostalgic for me. Yeah. I don't know, like, that I probably wouldn't bother watching on VHS again, because, like, like a B, like a martial arts film, yeah. like, a B, like a Billy Blanks film, uh, is, like, so clearly made for the rental market, and just, like, has this era and aura about yeah. it, uh, that, like, feels right for it. Like, James Bond, I, like, it's too cinematic, I would, like, want to see Oh, that yeah, I mean, I'm... Yeah. In, like, a yeah, exactly. Blu-ray or UHD. But, like, I actually got a VHS in the mail just a couple of days ago, and it's this. It is the VHS release of uh, Game Music Festival. Oh, it's too glary. There you go. Uh, Game Music Festival 90, which is the uh, Suntada and SSD band concert, which I also have on Laserdisc, but I wanted to have it VHS as well mm -hmm. in my collection. Yeah. I mean, it's you one know, of the, the best concerts the ever. Thing by the thing with VHS, like, it's like different from DVD, I feel. Mm -hmm is um oh we done with the level i think we're done with the level yeah you beat the boss um the, the thing that's different for well i mean like that was a continuous level of getting all these characters hmm. but the thing with vhs for me like i feel like the vhs aesthetic translates equally well between crts and digital if you like captured it really well you know what I mean? Yeah. Whereas I feel like DVDs, like with their macro blocking and stuff like that, I feel like DVDs are only good on CRTs. Whereas like a yeah. VHS, like if you upscale it well, I think it can have a fun look like. So I guess what I'm saying is if you digitize your VHS, like that yeah. can have a fun nostalgic look to it no matter what screen you're looking at it on but yeah, dvd yeah. it really only has that really clean look on a crt yeah you're probably right about that uh so like uh -huh. you know th this is something that i've i've thought a lot about a lot lately is like you know years and years ago people would convert their home vhs movies to dvd like at the time yeah. we thought oh this is forever like this is a permanent master copy but now you know, most people would consider DVDs to be inconvenient to use. You know, burnable media we know is not as long lasting as... And now that we're looking at them on HD and 4K screens like that, you've not only retained the... Oh, it looks like... Oh, my camera froze. Um, or my whole, whole stream might have blipped for a second. Um, but now you've got like the downsides of VHS. You've got that fuzzy, noisy picture. And you've added the macro blocking of DVD and it probably wasn't encoded like super duper well yeah. anyway when you just use like this like standalone DVD recorder. So like you really, if you were to re-preserve that, you'd be better off going back to the VHS source and digitizing that. Because like, you know, like with... with the word, you know, remaster and master copy and stuff like that is really abused. Like, I think we were talking about this with, like, the Chrono Cross remaster. The yeah. Chrono Cross remaster has so many new flaws. And yeah. if you were to, you know, truly call that the master copy, like, you do not want new versions of Chrono Cross to be based on that. Like the ma the new master copy has to have none of uh, no to truly make it a new master copy. You do not want to introduce new shortcomings in the new format you've transferred it to, and which is really hard to do in the digital world. 
Because like right now we think, oh, like 4K, like that's going to be perfect. Well, you know, and maybe in 20, 30 years, we'll be like, oh gosh, this, this 4K VHS rip looks terrible. <laughs> I wish it was, you know, a, a, a 28K <laughs> rip. You yeah, know? Yeah. I mean, you know, you know, like, but DVD especially, like you've introduced so many new flaws to the source. So I, but like, same thing, like Chrono Cross, like you want to go back to that original. You know, it's amazing to me, actually, like, uh, you know, I was just capturing footage for uh, John of uh, Final Fantasy X on PS3. Yeah. And like, it's crazy to me that they like, OK, like maybe like going back and totally re-rendering the original like CG files for the FMVs would just be too much or impossible. But it it, it, it is it really surprises me that they didn't that they wouldn't have made like at least like 720p progressive versions of those like back in those days and then downscale that to 480i for the game disc like it really is surprising to me because like you know they are clearly upscaled from a 480i source like it's just it's yeah, really yeah. surprising to me that they wouldn't at least have that you know nope they just uh that's a thing. Even when I worked, uh, you know, I worked very recently in Japan, um, like um, up till like last year, my company, and like even these days, you'd be surprised just how prevalent the idea of once you're done with something, move over to the next, and just not not keep. I mean, we know so, Nintendo I, has kept a lot of stuff, but I Nintendo guess that's kind of an anomaly. Nintendo is a special case, though. Nintendo yeah. is like Nintendo Namco. Are basically the only game companies, especially that like took care of their sources, and mm. I think that's accidental in some way. I think it's almost like it was very much a legal thing for them in the beginning, uh, especially in Nintendo's case. And then now it's very advantageous because all the sources of whatever they funded is still maintained. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to complain. Uh, but you know, I remember. It was a situation with uh, for the company I worked. Uh, we were gonna have a um, opening uh, cutscene, like uh, opening to the video game, and uh, we got a fi we got like a file that was incomplete. Or there was some kind of issue with it where we had to contact the people who had rendered it out to us. Like, and we discovered too late, or whoever worked on the code side discovered it too late. By that time. Uh, the source was gone, so it had to be remade. Wow! Uh, and that was like uh, four months, you know, something like that. So, like, they just don't keep. Uh, <laughs> I mean, with with, with, with like, you know, the, the trailer work that I do, like, I've been asked to, you know, like, oh, like, oh, we're releasing, you know, this game on a new platform. Can, can you, like, get us a new version of. Right. And, yeah, I've got it. I've got it backed up. It's not that hard to reopen the project. Yeah, yeah. Which is great. I mean, you and I have been working a lot on trailers lately. <laughs> yes. So, especially you. My God, you're a machine. <laughs> uh, I was gonna see if we missed any questions in the midst of our high rates. Uh, lots of people talking about anime, VHSs, and laser discs, and this and that. So I don't watch too much anime. I never, uh, surprisingly, never got much into it other than like specifics. But I do remember some of the first VHSs that I bought with my old money in the 90s were like the Midian Tank Police and Ultimate Teacher. Uh, those were like two big anime release on VHS. I guess so everyone is fully powered those. up forever at this point, huh? Yep, pretty much. Unless you go password route, I guess. So, I yeah. doubt it. Uh, but I'll check. You know, this 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 tile here looks suspicious. But yeah, uh, there's nothing to it, I think. Uh, disc rod. Someone was asking us about disc rod. So I never. I know John is the same. We've been asked this quite a few times on DF as well about disc rot. So I've never in my entire life 
experience disc rot. Still to this day, and I, you know, I've checked almost all my discs fairly recently. Yeah. Uh, as I was cataloging my collection, I actually checked every disc I had. I checked every laser disc, every CD, you know, pre <laughs> months uh, uh, undertaking. But like, still, you know, I checked, and I never, I, I never found uh, disc rot. Uh I wonder if it has to do with climate. I, I think climate is definitely uh, definitely probably a big part of it. I, um, right. You know, I, when I was working on Analog Frontiers Part 2, I, I like you, I checked every single disc I had because um, I was like, I really need to have an example of disc rot. And like, I was like, yeah. I was like surely something, something. Mm -hmm. uh, and I could not find it. Well, but I finally did find it, um, and it was a, you know, I, it's not, I don't actually consider it part of my collection because it was just like shoved into the box when I bought my PC engine. There was a copy of um, uh, Shin Megami Tensei and um, uh, um, Monster Layer. Yeah. And I think it was... I think it was SMT was the one that uh, actually had like some visible like holes like mm -hmm. in the disc. Like if you held it up to a light, you could see through it, see through those holes. Wow. Um, so <laughs> that is, but like, it was just like, it was a loose disc. So it was probably not well taken care of. Like my PC engine was in immaculate shape. But, mm. like, for some reason, there was just, like, two loose discs. Like, I didn't even know. Like, they weren't even in the listing. Like, those two games. Like, they were just... They were given away with it for some reason. Um, and, uh... So, like, the, the PC Engine itself was in great shape, but those games, I suspect, were not well taken care of. You know, maybe had been poorly stored. Um, and, obviously, they're are quite old for CD game media. Um, yeah. So, like, I think disc rot is still, like, very uncommon, unless you don't treat your stuff well. Yeah, I feel like, like I, I like a of collecting, right? I can't even imagine <laughs> like <laughs> like like, there's no such thing as a disc I am the original owner of that has mm. scratches on it. Like, how does every game that you go and buy used, like how does is is so hard to like find like a PlayStation or a, a Dreamcast or 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 Sega CD or whatever disc that is like not scratched up or at least have a few scratches? Like how do people not just like hold their game from the edge in the middle and put it in every time? <laughs> yeah, like, right. like, I don't understand wh why you would not treat this precious thing very well. Right. Like, I just, uh, like, my mind cannot get in a place where you're being careless with it. I mean, it, for some of us, these games are our children, Try For others, it's just... Disposable it's media. Disposable media. Hmm. Uh, are you going to the Southeast Game Exchange in Greenwell, South Carolina next one to try? Oh. I'm certainly not. Uh, I, I've always wanted to go to that. Or, when well, I say always, uh, since I learned about that it. That was your dream since you were a child. <laughs> go to the Southeast Game Exchange in South Carolina. Yeehaw! Yep. Yeah. Uh, no, I, I learned about it, um, I don't know, maybe three years ago. I was like, oh yeah, I'd, I'd like to go to that. Uh, what do they do there? Do they exchange games? Is that I, why I, I get guess, it? I mean, it's like a small convention, I guess. Uh, yeah. Or I think it, think it's small. I don't know. It might, might be bigger than I, I realize. Um, I, I don't know if it's like, if they have like panels and guests and stuff. I think they have some guests. Um, I've never why been. Why aren't you one of them? I mean, you're I'm, I'm North and South Carolina is like, you know, biggest star. <laughs> I don't know about that, but uh, uh yeah, I uh, I definitely 
want to go. Uh, yeah, when, for when, Charlotte, when, North Carolina, the Ric Flair of video games. Uh, where, uh, uh, when, when exactly is it? I don't have no idea. Can I mean, if, if someone said, we haven't missed any Super Chats, have we? You, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. I don't think so. Let me check. There's... Oh, yeah, we, there is one here. Would you like me to read it? Of course. Okay, from Container 7, there's $10. Try! Thank you for making that point about macro blocks and DVD transfers of home movies. I chose DVD to archive because the standalone DVD recorder did not seem to hitch or lose AV sync over time. Ooh. Yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, at, at the time we definitely thought like, oh yeah, this is this is it. But like, yeah. if I if I could do like, the, I mean, I I probably could like my my VHS my VCR situation right now is actually pretty dire. Oh no. Uh, yeah, like I don't really have like a good VCR right now, to be honest. I sure don't know what to do here. I would just run through. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I mean, the retro tank is great for digitizing. Right, right. Like, you, oh, you can get amazing results. Yeah. But I, I like my V, like I, like they just they need work. Like I don't really know anything about like replacing the belts or anything. Mm. Oh, this is. I never liked those bugs. Yeah, this is a little difficult. Freaked me out. You have to, like, really jump at the last minute. Let's see. But yeah, uh, someone's saying that the um, Southeast Game Exchange has gotten pretty big. Game Chasers, Metal Jesus Rock, Path, the oh. NES Punk, etc. are going. So... Yeah, I'm, we're not going. No one invited us as a guest. I mean, I, I might consider going just to go, maybe. It'd be like when, uh, when you went to the LRG store opening, you guys were like special guests without being <laughs> on the uh, <laughs> docket because everyone recognized you. That yeah, was kind of funny. What what is this guy supposed to be? Is he a bird? He's a duck. Why can a one-eyed duck? Why can he climb on walls? Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, that's a good question, actually. Can he uh, climb on not... walls in the show? I don't remember. I don't think that was any part of his uh, special abilities there. I think that's basically just like we need him to have a power up. What is it? Man, like, it's it's amazing how, you know, like, seriously Konami took their license to work, you know? I mean, they, like, put out good stuff basically every time. I was saying that I stereotyped South Southerners as uneducated hicks. I don't remember saying that anyone from the South was uneducated or a hick. I, I think, I, I maybe, maybe. A yeehaw? I People mean, in the South that I met says yeehaw. So yeah, that's not I mean we, That's we, just what they say. We, we 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 can embrace our southernness. That they talk like that. <laughs> uh, there is a giant slug on my head slowing me yes, down. Yes, you have to kill. You have to jump on the spike to kill him. Ah, there you go. Uh, Corey's out working. That's why you get the lesser form of him. Well, I mean, the form that does have hair. That's true, okay. Wow. Are you saying I'm superior because I'm here? Well, I mean, you know, I mean, you, you have something he does not. <laughs> does he mention that to you? Is that what you guys talk about when I'm out here? It's like, Audie man, he has that hair. <laughs> no, Cor Corey is very proud of his baldness. And he, he wears it very well. I, you know, he's a very attractive man. He, 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 he always says that, he, he always likes to say that his wife says that he was born to be bald. <laughs> he was, because we see. If you look at a picture of Corey with hair, it looks completely wrong. Yeah, it's it's a, it's a little unsettling. 
<laughs> yeah, it's just and it's not just it's like, like oh, how because you're how, used to seeing him bald. How, no, it's how, just that he looks wrong with it. How how is this the same human being like? That has the same life experiences and thoughts that this other human I being know. has. Yeah. That does not seem like like I feel like Corey with hair must be like an inherently different person. I don't think I could be friends with Corey with hair. <laughs> you know, I just don't think that's someone I would want to have in my life. <laughs> see what else? Uh, why doesn't Ohio have a huge retro game convention? Well, if this... I still live there, it would be... I would think about trying to organize one in Dayton. It's so close to Columbus, Cindy, and in Cincy, Cincinnati. There and is... Cindy. Like, I don't... It's not, like, huge, I don't think. I think it's a pretty... I've never been myself, but Corey's been several times to a thing in Columbus called Korgs. Korgs? Korgs, like, uh, I think it's, like... Columbus, Ohio, retro game something. Um, so there is that. Uh, I don't, I, but I, Corey has been several times. Um, gone with the 8 bit Duke. Um, oh. but, uh, is he related to the Dynamite Duke? Uh, I not not to my to, not to my understanding, but uh, he is he is also one of our good friends who happens to live uh, in Ohio as well. Don't use the duck here. Yes. What's more frustrating is that Orlando, Florida, just doesn't get any game conventions. I understand there's quite a few stores in, I think it's Orlando area, right? That like Henry Clark and uh, Choir Boy from our uh, Discord are from. I, I think mm. they're from Orlando area and they say they've got some good game stores. Every, every time I brag about Charlotte game stores, they're always like, oh yeah, we've got, we've got them too. Most people are jealous, but they're, they're just like, yeah, yeah, we got our own. <laughs> Have you have you been game shopping uh, up there in Canada at all? Oh, I certainly have, and I found good stuff. Uh, I go with my uh, wonderful lady a few times a week to pawn shops, and I said pawn shops, not P O R N. Uh, and like uh, you've made that mistake. Games, <laughs> yes. Uh, so it's the thing about here up in Montreal is that like the different like pawn stores have like widely different selections. Uh, there's not many retro game stores here. There's Retro MTL, which is a pretty good store. But if you go by like a Banco, that's a brand of uh, pawn stores, you can find good stuff. And I found uh, so recently I picked up uh, this, which is I guess you might not see a tribe. I'll show it to the people. I, I can see. Uh, oh, I got Fable the goes American West. Tale. Feeble Goes West, which is a pretty good Hudson game. Oh really? Uh, what else? Uh, what else did I get? Uh, let me just move over here to where my stuff is. I got a promo copy of Total Eclipse that uh, came packaged in with 3DO. Oh. I got Top Gun, the second mission. Oh, yeah. Because why not? I have the first mission as well. Uh, this I bought for John. This is an interesting one. I found the official Quake 2 Ooh. strategy guide uh, at a local like uh, secondhand bookstore. Uh, it has the maps and stuff in it still, so it's complete. And John didn't have it, so... Nice. Uh, the other things I picked up was... Oh man, look at the water in here. I saw this on the, oh, the yeah, pre-title yeah. demos. It's uh, several layers, right? This is a pretty uh, difficult place. Uh, this, uh, try. Yeah, it's dark. I found Choplifter Cartridge Edition in box at a pawn store for Commodore 64 for like 10 Canadian bucks. Wow. And... Yeah, I couldn't quite believe it, so I had to pick that up, because it's like, okay, I'm never going to find that again. It's really good condition. Is there is so, there a yeah. good way to turn the lights back on in here? I <laughs> know, just, you have to remember. What, why, why are they turning out the lights in the room that has one of the coolest looking effects in the game? Right. Right. <laughs> 
<laughs> Beevil's a rootin' tootin' yeehaw southerner in that game, and it's glorious. Yes, I suppose he is. I I, I, I saw a Fievel movie when I was is a kid. Is it Fievel? I thought it was Fievel. Oh, I, I don't know. I've always said Fievel, but... Okay. I don't know. Like, I saw, like, one, maybe, one or maybe two when I was a kid, but it was a long time ago, so I don't I don't know what they say in the movie. I, so yeah, I was telling Vivi this as well. I haven't seen any of the feeble movies. You know, I think they're, are they Don Bluth? They so, might I, be. Yeah, I, I love Secret of Nim and whatnot. I feel like it's sort of similar to that. I haven't seen them since the 90s, and apparently that game is pretty rare. Uh, it was a quite good price, so it's like, okay, well, and I tried it, and it's like, oh wow, this is a really good game. Uh, no one talks about it, so I guess uh, either we have to stream it together when I'm back down there, or something, but yeah, it's a good game. We had wow, a super chat, is... by the way, from Mega X6. Oh, thank you. Uh, four dollars, and he says he thoroughly enjoyed the pickup video. I suppose he's talking about our three-hour <laughs> yeah. video. I'm, I'm, I'm glad. Uh, I'm glad some people liked it. <laughs> it seemed like a lot of people. Oh, liked I think it. people did did like it. You know, a, a, a lot of people. A lot of people didn't watch it, which is you know, fine yeah. and expected. Yeah, we recorded that very much. I, I don't know if I would have watched it. <laughs> I would have watched it in parts. If it wasn't me. <laughs> if it was you and John, I'd watch it, like, an hour at a time. Over, like, a week. Fievel? Uh, Fievel. Someone said okay, that's what okay. Americans say, anyway. Oh, it is okay. five L? Fievel? Fievel? Yeah. In the movie, so... I I've actually only seen them dubbed, because I only saw them in the 90s. So I've only seen them in my own language. My dirty language. Now, I was I was telling you that uh, uh, that uh, we had uh, the the Swedish movie dub voice of uh, Sonic the Hedgehog. Uh, oh, uh, Christian Hedlund. In in our our stream last week, yeah, and he was like, oh yeah, I saw Audi an NES game last week or, or yeah, last yeah, year, uh, and I I brought in year, you know yeah. you left some of your Swedish games here. I was like, yes. oh, and I went and grabbed the bag, and I was like, was it any of these? And he's like, no, it wasn't any of those. <laughs> he he, yeah, he yeah, said if it was so... my copy of Bamsi, it would have my mom's handwriting with my name on it. <laughs> yeah. uh, Bamsi is uh, Swedish uh, localization of uh, baby T-Rex. Uh, yeah, Hedlund is a wonderful person. He's the Swedish voice of Sonic in the live action. Uh, he's a voice actor by trade. Uh, I bought Panic Restaurant. Oh, him. nice! Sweet box, and it's almost like it's mint, basically. How much was uh, it? I forget. He gave me a good price, just as a friend. Uh, but like, that's an expensive game, and the European version has different box art than um, the American version. Because the American version has like this crazy like uh, illustration on it. Like this realistic looking yeah, yeah, like, yeah. caricature realistic. Uh, whereas the European one has like uh, very much like the in game graphics like uh, illustrated. So it's a very Japanese Taito cover. I I was pretty tempted to get uh, a Jap I forget what the price was, but I saw a Japanese one that was like, yeah, you know I... Yeah, the Japanese one is completely different. In um, the sprite is like a young kid. Oh, really? Uh, okay. Than, yeah, rather than old chef. Well, I definitely like so, the old chef. Yeah, so then you should get the. Uh, well, yeah, the but the American chef. version's like a thousand dollars or something. Yeah, it's one of those. Yeah, so I would still yeah. rather get the. I did notice that the label art did look like a. Like a, a different character, but I still held out hope that maybe the character in the game was the same. No, no, no. Uh, yeah, they changed that. So unfortunate. I know. Uh, but but, uh, but I mean, it's, from what I've played, it's game. pretty awesome. Oh, it's a great game. Yeah, it's uh, not worth thousands. Of no. Dollars. Yeah, it's a really. But good, it's one really, of really the good. it's one of the better like super expensive NES games. Yeah, 
Like, like this, a lot of times the one, price this is like... probably the best of the super expensive ones, though. I, 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 I think Little Samson is pretty darn good. Yeah, but Samson is so short. Uh, I love Little Samson, well, but no, I, just I mean, it's don't got quite it. a lot of levels. I don't know. I, I feel like I can it. just run through it very quickly. But I, ha I have it, uh, but I bought that when it came out. Oh, wow. Uh, in Europe. So I didn't know how expensive that was for years just because I have it. Mm -hmm. And I didn't really keep up with that stuff like in the 2000s, like early 2000s and whatnot. Yeah. I, I, but that I, was already expensive. Like, <laughs> by like 2005, right? Yeah, I, I, I mean, I didn't hear about it until much later. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I, I, I got, I got my copy and a. They had, they had, you know, like a bunch of like random things that you could like buy in the back of like this like dirty pachinko parlor in Akihabara. <laughs> oh, so you got the Japanese version? I did, uh, yeah. Like, Lickle. Little Lickle. Uh, Seirei Densetsu Lickle. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. And, uh, and like, I, I, str I streamed it, like, immediately, uh, like, like, the very first Sunday stream we did after coming back from Japan, uh, I streamed it, because oh, I was, I was, like, so excited. Great game. I just don't know, like, if I like it better than Bakyo here. But, uh... Not but they're in different price range anyway, those two games. Yeah, like for sure. Samson, you just can't, you can't really buy Samson anymore. It's at such a price yeah. that it's just kind of like... I don't know if the Japanese you know, price has gone up any or not. Yeah, it has. But it was yeah. it was like 150 which was like, like I thought I was done buying games. And like I, I saw it like in the back of this pachinko parlor. It was like, it was about $150. And I was yeah. like... Like at the time, like the like the only like somewhat pricey game I bought was uh, Gunparu. Okay. Uh, I mean, was it like really pricey? It was like the SNES game. Yeah, like it was like one that plays like Zelda. Yeah, it looks like Earthbound meets Link to the Past, basically. Yeah. yeah. Um. You can shoot him in, uh, on the top of his head now. Oh, I it's guess I could, you do I have to get with, under uh, him to do that, really? Yeah, you can either go under him or use Jenny. Yeah, that... Or the block. Yeah, that would make sense. Oh, and I... After all that, I forgot to duck. <laughs> um, uh, I've been pretty lucky with my NES collection to accidentally kind of have... Yeah. Because I have a Mr. Gimmick, which is also at your place right now. Yes. Uh, the Scandinavian release of that. And um, several years ago, I got Gimmick, the Japanese version, for a very good price in box. So I have both of them. You don't and even like that game, game that much, though. I don't. Uh, that's another one where I just I love the music in Gimmick, but I just don't find the gameplay all that riveting. I, I understand that, like... Just forgetting to duck. I understand that when... Uh, like, like, it's a game that, like, really takes a lot of, like, learning and practice. And, like, mm, yeah, people yeah. say, like, once, like, the mechanics, like, really click with you, it's amazing. But it takes work to get to that point. Yeah. Duck. Um, but, yeah. You know, speaking of expensive NES games, uh, I told, and I got permission from the, the lady that's been walking around here. I got her permission to do this. Uh, one of the things I really want to do now that I have a new job is that I want to celebrate and I want to get one of my white whales. Oh! Uh, I want to get a boxed Power Blade 2 because I love Power Blade Ooh. 9. Yes. But you don't like Power and Blade 2 that much. Power Blade 2 is not as good of a game, but just because I love Power Blade, I want both of them. Mm -hmm. And I have boxed one. So I was like, well, I guess it's now or never. And <laughs> my God, the price on that is just so ridiculous. That's like, I can't make myself pull the trigger on it because I'm just like, no game is worth this much. That's the thing. Like, it's a white whale, but it's just like, I, I, I you know, I, there's so much else I could spend money on. <laughs> that feels so much better for both of us uh, than to buy myself a Nintendo game in a box, a cardboard box. So. 
I haven't gotten it yet. I'm really unsure if I will. Uh, maybe I'll get a card only just cause, but like... You know, even though now I could just, like, theoretically afford it just for my... Like, to celebrate, so that I, you know, eat ramen for a couple of months. <laughs> but it's like... Uh, even with the permission, you know, from your significant other, it's like, I couldn't do it. I couldn't pull it. I got an offer, it was like $2,100 or something, and I was just like, no, I can't do that. <laughs> There's just no game that's worth that. It really is. Oh, but, uh, my... Is, is the kid's laser, um, strong? Because, like, he can shoot really fast, it seems. Uh, I, I don't. I mean, I'm just going on the assumption Bucky is probably the strongest. No, he's like the middle character. I don't know. If, uh, yeah. Who? I don't know. Who has the strongest power? I mean, the strongest power is Jenny fired up. Right, but, but like the strongest like pea shooter. Maybe it is Bucky, because uh, I just don't know how strong uh, Will's gun is. But. Uh, uh, someone was asking me, Bruce McGee is asking me, Have you played Power Blazer, the Famicom Power Blade? Yes, I have it. Oh yeah, like the, um, the level, some of the, at least some of the levels are quite different. Oh yeah. And the, the main character looks different. super different. Yeah. Um, I don't think Power Blazer is a great game. I think the localization in Power Blade was a very smart move. They cleaned up the level design. Oh. Uh, they cleaned up the game balance. And Power Blazer is just, like, interesting, but it doesn't play as well. It doesn't even control as well. Really? So, wow, I know. had no idea it was that different. Yeah. So they tightened that game up for Power Blade. With Nova. Oh, yeah, but with, uh... <laughs> well, I was saying before with, uh, Japanese Little Samson, I was like, I felt done. Like, you know, I bought a, a bunch of, like, N pretty normal priced games, like nothing extravagant, like like you know that kind of middle-ish high, like Gunpowder was like the the like I was like okay, you know what? I feel satisfied. I feel I feel done with what I've bought. Um, but I, I I saw that little Samson, and I was like, oh yeah, you know, look at that. That's that's cool. You know, that's cool. I'll uh, tell you one of the. I'll tell you quickly one of the reasons why I ended up with the lady of the house is uh, we were in Japan together and uh, try you you know my love for a certain character in video games called Bubsy the Bob Cat. Oh sure. <laughs> yes, uh, I am on record of being a very big fan of it. Uh, legitimately, it is not a joke. And when we were in Japan together, because uh, I was working there and I uh, brought her over to stay with me for a bit, and we were walking around and we found the uh, Yamaneko uh, Bubsy uh, release, the Super Famicom release, in, in box, in very good condition, and it was an astronomical price on it. Hmm. And I was like, I, I'll never afford it. And lo and behold, she got it for me. Oh, goodness. So, yes, that, that was just like, <laughs> you don't need a ring on that finger. <laughs> Bubsy in box. <laughs> You know that uh, that game show, that John Bomb game show, uh, we were on arcade pit. Um, it, you, you should watch the archive of that. Uh, it, oh, I absolutely will. I just know it doesn't even know we were on it. Yeah, well, I you know we meant to to say that we were going to be on it last week's stream, and we just forgot to. But people can go to the John Bomb YouTube archive and, and find it there. Um, but. Uh, <laughs> you should watch that because, like, I guess the guy that runs that is like, like, also like uses Bubsy like in the show imagery quite a bit. Like, there, oh, really? There's like this animation of the opening of Ninja Gaiden One, replaced with with um, I think it's I think it's the the bad guy that gets cut. The guy that gets cut down mm. is uh is um is bubsy it's, it's pretty oh funny. that's horrible it's pretty funny <laughs> i could never be on this show <laughs> but uh, there's there's actually there's a lot of uh there's a lot of bubsy uh uh 
several other Bubsy clips. Oh, I see. Used. So yeah, I thought it was I thought it was kind of funny. Like, oh wow, like there's there's another person on the internet who makes Bubsy into a thing. <laughs> but no, with the uh, with the little Samson though, I was like, like so like that night we had a um we had like a little get together with like Cor was like oh let's see if there's like anyone who watches the show like out here who wants to meet up and of course they were all like foreigners working in Japan you know? yeah <laughs> not I don't think that many like you know native Japanese people really like I, I think like ja- J- YouTube Japan is very like isolated from like English yeah. language uh, YouTube um, well, they have their own, remember? Like, right, 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 right. Like, I just, I don't, I don't think our, our, our show really reaches, like, the, the, the native Japanese audience over there. No. Too much. I mean, some. We sometimes, we sometimes get some, some yin super chats. I don't know, you know, if they are uh, foreigners living abroad or, or people living in Japan. Uh, but yeah, we, we ran to several uh, people, uh, including one guy from Spain who worked at Square Enix, which was cool. Um, but we also met one of our Timio's friends from Mexico. Um, oh, wow. And uh, he was like, talking like, oh, you know, I've been looking for, uh, looking to get, you know, little Samson. You know, he he was he was working, I think, at like a like a Japanese like telecom company. And, uh, uh, he, he was, he was like, um, I was like, yeah, I really want to, really want to get little Samson. I was like, oh, you know what? Like I, I saw a copy of it at, at this, this Gachapon parlor today. And, uh, our friend Jimmy, who was with us, um, I was like, oh, oh yeah. The, the yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he, he explained like where it was. Uh, and like, I, like, I didn't think he was like actually serious about like going and, and getting that copy, but, um, uh, like the next morning I was like in the shower and I'm just like, what, a, like, I, I gotta get, like, it just like, it hit me all of a sudden. I was just like, I gotta get that. Like th- th- that, that, like I will never have a chance to own this game in any form ever again. If I don't go, go back and get that. And wait, is that me? Is we that... have to go left. Oh. <laughs> um, and, uh, so I went back and got it. And then, um, this guy, uh, Aldo, he was, I, I looked at, I, I briefly went into, like, it was really, or actually, I don't even think I saw it live because uh, I think it was, like, I, I was asleep or, or something. I, like, saw the archive of this, like, pickup stream Jimmy did from, like, the time that he was hanging out with us while we were in Japan. And uh, our TV's friend Aldo was, was in the chat. He was like, "Oh, I went to that Gachapon place, and and little Samson was gone." He was like, "Oh, try it!" I was like, "Oh my gosh!" I felt so bad because I like, I like told him where it was. I just like I didn't realize like how serious he was about like going and getting it. But then you need to climb the wall, by the way. Oh yeah, good good point. Um, I was talking to Artemio about it later. I'm like, "Oh my gosh, I'm I'm so I like I feel so bad that like Aldo did not get that little Samson." He's like, "Oh, like." He, he found it like a few weeks later. I'm like, oh, okay. okay. He's like, the di- he's like, you shouldn't feel bad because he had time and you didn't. <laughs> like yeah. that was the only copy you were able to find. Like, you know. <laughs> Come on, there you go. I think everyone's powered up. Yeah, I don't have to worry oh, about P me. for anyone else. <laughs> Try not to sneeze into the microphone. So when you're standing on that, uh, on those platforms, you don't move. I know. Like, that's like it's platform. super yeah. weird. <laughs> yeah. So you kind of have to. Uh, yeah, it, it's weird. 
but you, you seem to be getting through it. Yeah, it's 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 a little awkward for sure. Yeah, but yeah, you noticed, of course, that like the whole game has changed to linear, right? So now yes. it's just going through the ship. Yeah, escaping the ship. It's it's, it's an interesting change, you know. It's kind of weird. Well, you start I mean, it's, with, it's, like the selection. Well, it's not like, weird at all because I mean, it's just like Mega Man, you know. This is the Wily yeah, Castle. I suppose. I suppose it is. Mo most, Mega Man. Mo most, most games that start off. I mean, for only four. <laughs> that guy goes, "I hate you." <laughs> <laughs> I mean, most. Uh, uh, I would say most NES games that, that start li linear or start. You know, with a choice, you know, a level based choice eventually end up this way. But I guess starting with only four of that and then totally linear maybe is a, a small number, but they are long. And then you have to like levels. unlock but, the characters again. Yeah, which but, is also kinda weird. but also, like you said, like the choice is a little meaningless, at least in the case of the robot guy, where there's that one level yeah. that you just can't beat without him. But the choice yeah, isn't completely meaningless. I wouldn't say. Does I have a boss rush at the end? Uh, yeah, there's a boss rush. Later on. Of course. Uh, is the... Do you know what the Japanese version is? Is this one of those games where, like, the Japanese version is more expensive? Um, it's about the same-ish price at this point. Uh, there's no differences other than the text localization. Yeah. So... I mean, I assume the show was not... didn't exist in Japan, really. No, it was not... I like, like, Ninja Turtles stuff. It didn't get the dub, so... No. But I the, mean, you would, was you would think a, a... The idea of, like, since Japan has the whole thing about, like, rabbits on the moon, you would think a space rabbit would... <laughs> Right? Would would work in Japan. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, there's also, uh, there was also plans of, you know, uh, Yusagi Yimbo, right? Yes. Like that, yeah, so there was a planned cartoon during this time for Space Yusagi. Oh. Uh, and actually, due to the kind of failure of this show, uh, they didn't go through with that. I, I was so, and I still am really into Yusagi, uh, so I think that's pretty sad. Uh, I was sad when this was cancelled as well. So, you know, just, uh, I guess bunnies in space just isn't, uh, the seller we think it is. Mm. Bu bunnies but, uh, in space play a pretty big role in, in Final Fantasy XIV Endwalker. But. Oh, well, <laughs> I have a reason to play it. Then. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, there is a arcade game of this as well, which, the arcade game is really interesting because it sort of is the closest thing to a end that this franchise got. Um, so, if you were a fan of the cartoon, this video game, these kind of things like me, the uh, arcade game is sort of essential, even though there's not much to it. I mean, it's just an arcade brawler. It does seem really good, though. I'm pretty sure it's on Mr. Because I think... Is it? I... It's an arcade. Uh, it's a Konami arcade. Does Mr. have a Konami arcades on it? <sighs> if so, I mean... Does, does, I'm like, not gonna. I'm not gonna load it up, obviously. But I'm gonna. Oh, you're gonna totally hit the wrong button, aren't you? It's like, screw up all this progress. I don't see it. No, because I don't think the but I feel Konami like... boards are emulated yet, are they? I feel like or... I saw Corey stream it at some point, though. Maybe it huh. was. Maybe it was Drum. Maybe Drum streamed it on just like a PC emulator. I don't know, but I feel like I saw part of it played not that long ago. Maybe there's a beta? Maybe? Cor Corey, Corey is... Uh, Cor Corey is... I mean, you know, just just, just like we were... <laughs> you, you, you and Corey are into the, into the loading and the updating and the all that, and me and John right. aren't. You know, he, he does do the beta cores, and I'm just like, ugh. I don't want. I, I, I mean, I know that, like, Turtles is being developed for Mr., but I haven't heard any, like, because I'm patiently awaiting, like, Turtles and Asterix. Uh, but if Bucky 
it's available. I want to play that because I mean it's a great um, Konami brawler. Yeah, I mean what I saw was was good. Gosh, I, I swear I saw it be I know I saw it being played. Mm. Um, I just can't remember what the context was at this point. Um, but it did look super good. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah, I thought it was Mr., but I, I am not positive. I have not seen any mention of Bucky on Mr., and I, I think I would have seen it, but, I mean, things do slip through the cracks, so, yeah, if anyone in chat knows what's up with that, I'd love to hear it. Uh, Bruce McGee says he likes all the westernized NES action platformers, like Shatterhand. Uh, which was Soul Brain in Japan. Kickmaster. Uh, was Kickmaster released in Japan? Or was it only... Is Kickmaster not a Japanese game? I mean, yes, it is. But, like, I, I'm just not sure if... It's oh, you know what? Yeah. Kickmaster, like, every time I've looked up the Japanese copy of that, like, it's always, like, a, clearly a bootleg. Yeah. I think that was a US-only release. It may it have be. been. K uh, Kickmaster is not as good as the other NES pl games of that uh, you know that those, those cool dude doing cool dude things uh, hidden gems <laughs> I mean I, I love Kickmaster especially music I love the cutscenes too like just aesthetically Kickmaster yeah. looks fan yeah. I, I, I wish I had Kickmaster but I I don't regret not having it as much as say not having Bucky O'Hare or Metal Storm. Kabuki Quantum Fighter. Yeah, that is a, now that that's one, a completely different game in Japan because that's based on the movie in Japan. Right. So, uh, I have a Japanese version of that. Uh, Kabuki uh, Quantum Fighter is cheap, though. Or at least, yeah, in, yeah, unless American something release. has changed The Japanese recently. release is not cheap. Oh. Yeah, so. Uh, Power Blade... That was it. Yeah, yeah. Do I have that here? Let me see if I have. Some games were sent to me to this address. Just don't know if that was one of them. Quickly. Oh, yeah. Get that for you. Stop here. This is Kabuki Quantum Fighters on. Oh, cool. I mean. The character looks similar. Yeah, yeah. So, I knew I had it. So yeah. Well, yeah, Bucky here did definitely get a Japanese release, and I do not have it. I it's a red card, box. isn't it? Asterix arcade game. We're lacking Asterix content here in the U.S. Asterix and the Secret Mission is one of the underrated, most underrated Master System games. Yeah, so if you want to know more about Asterix... Oh, actually, you can't... So back in the day for Hardcore Gaming, I made a retrospective on every single Asterix game ever made. Ever made. I love Asterix. Has that, has that ever made changed, though? What? Ha has the ever made changed since then? Uh, <laughs> yes. Oh, if there's more games, you mean? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I did that article in, like, 2010. Uh, I think you can access it by the ways of archive.org. Uh, let see if I can do it right now, if you want. Wow, can these robots be hit at all? Looks like the article is still up if you go uh, the HTML route. Alright. I have no idea. Uh, 2011. That was when I wrote this. But I can look here. 
uh, that has that's an article. If you go in the chat right now, you can see it. Uh, that is an article with every Asterix game ever made that I made back in the day. And uh, yeah, there's a ton of good Asterix games. Most of them are actually quite good, uh, even the ones that aren't like great. Uh, in comparison to other licensed games, uh, they're pretty good. Uh, the arcade game from Konami is... It's not the best Konami brawler, but... In terms of just how well the license was used, it's a fantastic game. And it looks just like the comic. Uh, it's just a little bit formulaic, unfortunately. Right, there's gotta be a way to kill these robots. Oh! Uh, is there... I think you have to avoid them, actually. They're pretty tough to avoid. <laughs> yeah, true. I just don't know if you can actually kill them. I don't remember any. I guess they don't actually shoot you or anything, though, so... No, no, no. I guess... They just walk slowly. Yeah, I... I'm... Perhaps I'm more panicked by them than I needed to be. You don't need that one up. I know. <laughs> now you died. Yeah, one ups are not that useful aside from keeping your yeah. life. True, it's true. Uh, $2 from Phenomo Phenomenus. Phenomenus, thank you. Uh, yeah. Uh, evening, boys. Reactions to the RE4 remake reveal. Cheers. Uh, I you see that? I was I'm, mm, I I wish I could say I was feeling it. Um I, I mean I, I I I mean I think Resident Evil 2 remake is like it, it, it's at least my second favorite, maybe my favorite game, like depending on whether you Depending on whether you consider Breath of the Wild a last-gen game or not, uh, yeah. Resident Evil 2 is the other contender for my top spot. Hmm. Um, I, I mean, that, that, that remake is, is an amazing, amazing game. Um, but I, 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 it was always going to be risky, I, it was always going to be a much tougher ask, I think, to remake Resident Evil 4. Yeah. Because the tone of that game is so perfect. Like, Mikami's command of the B-movie tone is just masterful. Um, And I always knew, like, oh, there's no way they're going to play Leon as, like, this goof with, like, super dry humor. Like, they're, they're just... They've never done it since, and they're never going to do it again. Like that, Leon was 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 perfect in in that game, and he's never going to be perfect again. But I I accepted that. But I started getting really worried because you know I I felt like me and Corey were kind of in the minority here, but like we we were rather disappointed with Resident Evil Eight. I liked it more yeah. than Corey did. Corey kind of didn't like it very much at all. Um. I, I, I was just a little disappointed with it, I guess. Um, but the thing that bugged me the most about Resident Evil Four was, uh, you know, and th this is this is certainly no offense to Audi, but uh, Europeans speaking with like American accents. <laughs> <laughs> it, do, it doesn't it doesn't work in Resident Evil I don't think like nah. here, here you know like you know these are like you know rural like Romanians or something you know like the the you know the the country is 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 not named uh you know I my 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 my, my 11th grade math teacher was Romanian uh, oh. <laughs> I'm pretty sure she lived in America for a long time, but you know, she still had a pretty thick accent. Uh, like it just, it doesn't make any sense that like, you know, like, it just, like, it, like, I just don't understand 
like to like I think like for British people that's got to be like super weird like hearing like European characters with American accents like it just it it really like broke my immersion in Resident Evil 8. Like it was it really bugged me. Um it's like kind of hard to tell in the trailer like Lewis sounded like he might have a slight accent, but it was hard to tell. Sadler, like what I assume was Sadler speaking, like it, he did not, he sounded, I mean, Sadler's accent was always a little different from the other characters. I was never like really clear, like, is he supposed to be Spanish or something else? Like I was never really clear on Sadler. Um, but, oh, well, this looks like something. Um, but anyway, like he, he like had a pretty American sounding accent to me and it was, like, I, don't, I don't know, like, like the tone of Resident Evil 4 is just like so perfect to me. Um, and I, I just, I'm, I, I, it's, I'm sure the game is going to play great, but like, it's, mm. Like, it, I, I want it to be good because I get so bored replaying Resident Evil 4 nowadays just because I've yeah. played it so many times. i play it so many times. So, the way I feel about RE4 being remade is, like, for me, I think RE4 is, like, a really timeless design. It's... You've played it many times. Yeah. That's not to say that, like, you know, for someone that's just picking that up today, it's basically what kickstarted the whole, like, third person action game genre mm -hmm. for, like, PS3 and 360 generation. And, and what's so sad about that, too, is, like, I mean, it was, like, considered one of the greatest action games ever made until yeah. Gears of War came out, and then all of a sudden, no one can tolerate standing still while shooting. Like, that's not allowed anymore. Yeah, yeah, but that's that's the nature of like just the time it came out and whatnot. But like, yeah, the, the gameplay evolved with the other titles. But well, but like, remake, not with Resident Evil Five though. Like, I always thought, no. like, I always thought Resident Evil Five like kind of, kind of, it, it got a. I I felt like its its reputation, it it deserved a better reception than it got, because I feel like I Resident know. Evil Five is not that much less great than Resident Evil 4, which I feel I, like is, is a super unpopular opinion, but I yeah, really, I, agree, but... I really like Resident Evil 5 a lot. Um, uh, and, uh, I like the, but the, like they, they had like a sort of gear style control scheme in it, but you still couldn't move while shooting. Now, I use, yeah. like, the Resident Evil 4 style control, because, I mean, it's a fundamentally very different game. I just didn't really understand why, like, all of a sudden, like, oh, we aren't allowed to, like, like, it, like, like, I, I still feel like, 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 stopping and shooting is, like, a valid game concept that is worth exploring like I don't <laughs> I don't understand why that's not allowed anymore but whatever that depends on how the action is orchestrated composed right but like but the, but the thing is like no the, the thing is though like like I agree like like the action could like someone could make a a new good a new great like stop and pop style shooting game but the the market wouldn't accept it. Ah, uh, that depends. The market accepts anything as long as it's done well. So I don't know. Anyways, for uh, RE4, I just feel like if I'm gonna play a remake, I hope they make a, like take the core concept there, but like make it something new. I would. Yeah. I, I I'm not very interested in playing RE4 just like with better technology because you can already do that with the HD project uh, that came out a few months ago from um, I don't know if you ever saw have you ever played that oh uh, no I haven't so someone like meticulously remade all the like textures and like even fixed geometry and gameplay of re4 on PC 
and released the HD project, which like looks incredible. Uh, it's really just shocking that like Capcom hired this man, Capcom, <laughs> uh, basically done right. Uh, but so yeah, the cell for me. So I mean, like, like the, the Resident remake. Evil, Resident Evil Two remake was like a really good blend, like just the right balance yeah. of familiar and, and new. Yeah, but the Resident Evil 2 remake, right? That fundamentally changes how you play the whole game. Oh, it's yeah. It's not just a matter of, like, upping the tech. And I'm not saying RE4 is probably going to be very different. I just hope they actually, like, get a bit brave and do things very different. I think it is like, going to be pretty different, but I, I'm still I'm still bugged by the accents. Yeah, I mean, well, but, but like I said, like... Have it's... you heard the accents of the original, though? Like, the accents that were... Oh, I'm not saying they're good the accents. I'm not, not saying they're... Very, like, accurate. No, I'm not saying they're accurate, but, like... Yeah. But, like, that game is so masterfully cheesy. Like, like... Yeah, yeah. Like, I don't think people appreciate enough, like, just how good of a, a B-movie imitation it is. Yeah, I know. You're totally right. I mean... It, like, that, it is so... Yeah. Like, like, and... <laughs> do B-movies have accurate accents? No. Uh, no, not necessarily. But <laughs> no. Like, oh, you're totally right. That, like, you know, the RE2 remake kind of goes from being uh, a B... You know, the original RE games are very much B-movie influenced, like George Romero and these mm. kinds of things. Uh, and then the remakes are very much like... You know, Almo Draft House remakes. They they, uh, they attempt to be more serious, but they're still they still, I think, retain most of the the heart of the original tone. Right. Um, I think it's Almo Draft House. That's not what I meant. Uh, what's that company? A one. Uh, there's like a company that remakes uh, and does a lot of horror movies these days, where it's like really artistic. Mm -hmm. That's kind of what I meant. Sorry. Almo Draft House is a wonderful cinema chain. Uh, but uh, yeah, I just. You know, for me, when it comes to remakes, I'm always of the opinion that, like, remaking a great game makes no sense. Uh, because it's already good, and I understand some people can't go back and whatnot, but that's their problem. Yeah. But, like, I am much more in favor of, like, take games that, like, didn't achieve their concepts and remake them. Uh, like, mm. and RE even itself has um, uh, Codename Veronica. I don't think Code Name Veronica is necessarily a very good game. Right. Uh, well, I, I've ever since people were saying like, "Oh, Resident Evil Four is going to be the next one." Um, yeah. Like I've always been saying like, "Why?" <laughs> like, yeah. you know, like, like, why not Code Veronica? That's the game that needs a remake. Right. And it's like just to clean up the narrative, clean up the gameplay, mm -hmm. um, remove uh, Steve or whatever his name is. <laughs> make it don't need to bring well, I mean, we can bring him back, but make him a good character. <laughs> yeah, okay. If they can. I don't know how much... Uh, you can't save much from those scraps. But, like... <laughs> uh, yeah, but, I mean, that's, like... That's the only RE kind of remake I would feel, like, compelled. It's like, okay, that's cool. Like, I wonder what they do with that. When I see RE4 and stuff, I'm going to play it. Oh, I of course I'm going to play it. Right, yeah. But I'm just not so excited for it. I'm not, I, I yeah. think the original stands the test of time. Yes. And I think people get excited for it. Just don't think about just how good that original is. And how, you know, you can scale it up wonderfully today. Either by the game itself or with, like, the HD project. So. Yeah. I, I it's mean, kind of like the uh, Super Mario All-Stars 3D uh, thing where it's like... By the time that came out, right, we had the fan-made deconstruction or decompilation of yeah. uh, Super Mario 64, so we had seen better. That's how I feel about RE4, almost, where it's like, well, I love that original game, and someone already kind of made an HD, like, remastering mm. of this that's, like, fantastic. So I guess the impact on me is just not as strong mm -hmm. as if we never had that, obviously. Sadly, you're small time. Mean, yeah, the the lines in RE4. Oh man, are <laughs> it's I love Leon's tone in that game. It's just such is it is the best cheese ever, mm -hmm. basically. Oh, it's, it's just it's so funny. And li like, you know, I, I I feel like Shinji Mikami. Like, I I, I feel like it's in mostly intentional. 
Well, like must be. I mean, he... because like Resident Evil like one and Resident Evil one remake, like I mean, they have that, you know, that that tone to them. You know, yeah. it's just like he clearly really likes B movies. Now, now I think there was like a recent interview with Mikami where he said something like. Or he said something like, oh, like, uh, you know, I, I hope they make a better story in the remake. It's like, yeah, so... I, I, but that's, that's like typical, like, artists, like, not understanding, like, what makes their own work great. Like, that's... Sure. Yeah. Well, I mean, he's... I met the comic a couple times. He's a pretty humble, nice fellow. Uh, but the thing about... So Capcom back in those days, this is something I've written some articles about, um... It was pretty. It was pretty standard back then, but Capcom kind of spearheaded this uh, at their offices, at their de de uh, development offices. Uh, they had CRTs running with VHS machines uh, all day uh, to get inspiration, and they had horror Ooh. movies, action movies for inspiration. Like that's how Final Fight. You know, Final oh, Fight. They okay. watched movies uh, and then took a few trips to like the West Coast to capture Final Fight, which doesn't make any sense, because it's mostly, like, Brooklyn-style, like, Death Wish-looking uh, places in the beginning. And then only at the end do you have, like, the uh, Malibu uh, boardwalk thingy. But, like, anyway. Uh, so all of these... And Suda51 talked to me about this, too, where when he was uh, at the human... Uh, human being the game company. Uh, human... Uh, Entertainment. that... Yeah, but they had their own... So, Human had this subs subsidiary where they basically had classes uh, where people learned how to, like, individually stand out. Oh. Uh, and it had a name. Uh, I just keep forgetting it. This Human... Let's see. I have it in my notes or something. I wrote, a part. I wrote an article about this only a while ago. Anyway, it doesn't matter. But yeah, human, actually, the way they, they brought new people in was that they had to go to this um, academy-like experience for like a month or two. And they also had like movies running constant for them to get inspiration from. That's so, pretty awesome. And that was something that was adapted from Ira, and then eventually Capcom, and then like basically everyone did it. Oh great! Of course, of course, it shoots after I break open the glass. Someone said that like Mikami has said um, Mega Drive Aladdin is better than this NES version. Well, he's wrong then. He is wrong. The Mega Drive version. He's is, he's uh, just being humble. <laughs> yeah, he's being humble because the Mega Drive version slash Genesis is just uh, it's not that good. It's a wonderful art. It looks wonderful amazing. No, graphic. No, no doubt. But the. The sound I don't like that much, and the level design is trash. Straight up garbage. I mean, I, I have never really liked, like the. I forget if that one's is, is 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 that like the shiny entertainment one or, like I guess like shiny entertainment and Virgin Interactive like kind of had like some overlapping like game mm. design so you're talking styles. About Dave Perry, right? Yeah. 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 I, I never liked his style of game design. But, like, see, even... People keep bringing up, like, the graphics of Aladdin on Mega Drive slash Genesis. Sorry, I'm European, so I say Mega Drive. But, like, even, like, animation-wise, I find it way too over-animated, whereas the SNES version is traditionally made. You know, because this was what, the first one where the Disney animators came in, they made, like, the right, cell right. animation things. But, like, the uh, SNES sprite is, like, perfect. It has the perfect keyframes for all of its different actions. Whereas the Mega Drive one I just find to be, like, this floaty kind of... I don't know. It feels like there's no weight to any action being done in that game. So I like the physics and I like the animation of the SNES game way more. I mean, the Super Nintendo one feels more like a video game. A traditional yeah. video game. You're making progress here now. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I don't know how close I am to the end now, but like, it's uh, it's getting pretty late. I don't know. I don't know when you're looking to get off here. 
I was saying probably midnight. We're in the same time zone, so. Do you think I can? Uh, do you think I can? I can beat it by midnight. We'll, we'll try our best. I mean, this is this looks like the last mark on this map here. Hollers are too flat on the SNES now. I don't think so. I think it uses a really good SNES color palette. So I do think that color-wise, it's very impressive for Genesis, though. So. Oh, yeah, yes, someone, someone go. was, someone was saying on a recent stream like they felt. Like <laughs> the turns grabbing onto the. Yeah, cause they want to escape with. I you. know. Um, someone was commenting. Uh, they felt like Super Nintendo games. In general, like looked flatter than Genesis games. Yeah, I can see that in I, some cases. I can definitely. see the argument, but I don't I don't know if I would really consider that like a general rule or anything. Yeah. I don't I don't know if that's really a trend. But you know what I've noticed though in the last few years about Super Nintendo is that I find that good Mega Drive music is timeless. Like, you know, you can listen to a good Genesis soundtrack, like, anytime. It's just like raw and wonderful and you know timeless. But I find that the Super Nintendo soundtracks outside of the outstanding ones like you know, your David Weisses and Mitsudas, there's a lot of Super Nintendo music I don't find holds up as well today. It's like, the sample rate's too low and it's very reverby and... I mean, I don't... I, well, I mean, I, I so definitely well. hear the argument a lot that like, Super mm -hmm. Nintendo music isn't very good, but like, I... No, it, that's not what I'm saying, though. Right. Super Nintendo music is great. It's just that some of it I don't think has stood up to test the time. You, th you think the methods... Mega Drive music I mean, I mean, the methods of making Meg Mega Drive music definitely varied as well, because, like, American yeah, yeah. composers did not do it nearly yeah, as well as Japanese composers. Yeah, yeah. But, um... Uh... uh I don't know why I grabbed that. Oh, I don't know why I grabbed oh, that no. either. But now I now I have full health though. That that yeah, might make now a you difference. Don't need it. Uh, but like like you know, like an appreciation of like Sega Genesis music is like relatively new for me. I'm, you know, when I say relatively new, like I I didn't own a real Genesis until uh, like 2013, I think. So. Uh, you know, I think a, a lot of people feel like Super Nintendo, because it's sample based, like isn't as, I guess, valid as a like chip tune style. And like, because Genesis is true chip tunes, you know, I, I think that that kind of carries a lot more weight for some people these days. But I, I, I feel like, wow, I, like going behind that fence is actually like kind of impressive. Um, but oh, don't fly backwards when you shoot those glasses because, yeah, they're gonna crush you. Um, well, they, I don't think they immediately close as soon as it's closed. I think they close at a second. No, but time. you want to be close. Um, uh oh, we're getting Battletoad speed now. Oh no! Um, whew, it's hard. Carry on a conversation while you're doing this. I probably yeah, should. Yeah, just focus. I'll, I'll see if there's any questions. But the like, I, I still feel though like Super Nintendo music has like a good video gamey tone to it, even though it's sample based. I, I think a lot yeah. of people feel like that like invalidates it is like that era of game music or something. I don't know. Now is this a treasure? This this is or is this a treasure is. Box? It looks like the platforms are what take damage. Mm -hmm. Which is a little Probably weird, but first. whatever. Can't have stand spark sound effects gems. Yeah, that's you know gems. Cor is Corey just... hates gems. Like you know, as big of a. Genesis fan as Corey, of course, is like yeah. he he did not like and he considers the Genesis his favorite system, but like yeah. he 
he is like kind of not that big of a fan of like the second half of the Genesis is life. And I think part of that is gems and, and part of it is just his own history as he, you know, he, he got a super Nintendo, you know, for street fire two. And he like really got into the super Nintendo RPGs and stuff like that. So like his perspective of that generation is much more like Genesis first half super Nintendo second half. Um, but like, is this guy gonna die or what? I don't know. You're almost dead. Ah! Ah! Is that like the end no. of? Is that the end of the escape route? Uh, oh, oh! It looks uh, like no, they're playing me right. More. They're playing me right at him, actually. Yeah, that's true. So I, I didn't expect that since there wasn't a room transition. Um, Comic Zones was a gems driver. I, uh, Comic Zones. That's a Howard Drossen soundtrack. Howard Drossen was one of the better ones um, to use it, but I still think it retains a little bit too much of like bad instrumentation and like just sounds like a bad like general MIDI transitioning into FM synth. Like it's it's better though than the usual suspects. How how do you feel about um, uh, Beyond Oasis's music? Or sound in general. I like it. Do you um, have a problem with it? Well, I mean, I played it on Virtual Console, so I've okay. I've never played like I don't actually own a cart, so I've only I've only played like a little bit of uh the the you know on a real Genesis, you know, just on the EverDrive oh, so or whatever. That the uh, you could shoot both directions, by the way. How? Uh, if you select Bucky. Oh really? Oh, dang! Look at that. I didn't know they had. I thought they just used the regular guns. I was like, well, the, this kid's doing fine enough. Um. Uh, but um, like I recall it sounding very noisy on Virtual Console. At least, like it's got a lot of kind of more ambient tones to it. A lot of like, you know, I. I I assume sample based stuff like waves and wind and stuff like that. And I, I, I never thought it sounded that those aspects sounded that clean. Jungle strike sounds amazing on Genesis and they did a terrible job at SNES. Yeah, that's one of those. Uh, well, generally, the uh, the strike games are better on Genesis. So, oh yeah, it's a type 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 uh, ship. It's the uh, robots since he shoots downwards. Oh, you think so? Uh, eventually. Well, what? Yeah, once. No, 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 not right now. Yeah. Well... Yeah, this looks pretty good for this part. Maybe. Although Bucky would just to touch it. Yeah. So he is three clicks away from Bucky now. Okay. Three. Wait. Okay. Two from him to Bucky. Three from Bucky to him. Yeah, so. Then Sarah saying about MSG One because that's MSG One is the uh, is the uh, hack basically that lets you play uh, PCM tracks in uh, like audio like CD audio tracks uh, on Super Nintendo games by interfering like interfering the music column in the game code and like I like it as a concept and there are a few games where you can kind of see. Uh, what could have been in the sense of like a Sega CD situation with the Super Nintendo, like Super Star Wars when he just put like the John Williams orchestrations in there that works, because the soundtrack itself is just, you know SNES arrangements of that source music, but my problem generally with MSG1 is that people just go on YouTube, they download all these various remixes from OC Remix and wherever else, and just put them together and it doesn't work. There's no cohesiveness to the music. It's just like different remixes all over in different styles. 
And so oh, every... Man. You can't really do that. Because you need some sort of, like... Uh, a symmetry to all this music. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I love the, the idea of it and the what if, but, like, I'm... Like, when I play... Just execute a bad, generally. Yeah, acts, I mean... I find. It, like, when I play a game, like, I very much want the vanilla experience, you know? That's, like, yeah, that's yeah. just my... Like, I have no problem with, like, ROM hacks and stuff, but, like, that's just my perspective. Like, I want it to it's be... It's fun to try it. Like, it's if you have, like, an FX pack, it, there's nothing wrong with just having it on there and trying it out. You know, I generally would play with the original soundtrack anyway, but I think, as a concept, it's super neat. It's just that people don't really understand... Um, consistency when it comes to like audio direction they just like you find a metal remix of stage one you're like yeah it's uh, awesome YouTube. it's awesome right well there's no real remixes of stage two's music so i guess i'll just leave the original in there well stage three has this techno track <laughs> and i really like that too and it's just like it just yeah it's just it's a mixtape in the video game which doesn't work for me and that's why uh, I just generally find that like people when they make the MC1 hacks, uh, they they think about the concept, but they don't think about the execution, and it drives me nuts. Uh, so there's that. But the, there's other things you can do with MC1, like the Killer Instinct, like Mega Hack, whatever you call it, which does a lot of cool things to that game. I mean that takes advantage of the MC1 and more than just music. Uh, so. People are really... It's a shame. I think MC1 came from a very different place than what it turned into. Where it's now, now it's just kind of like music packs. And that's all it is. But there's so, so much more you could do with an MC1 uh, hack. That hopefully one day someone just comes out and really showcases it. Because I, I wish... Like, I... I was under the impression impression that uh, that there was quite a bit of preserved uh, Satellaview broadcast audio. At, quite a bit, yeah. But I thought there was a lot more than there is because it it seems like it's more like recreation. Yeah, well, and I could not figure out like how to actually run it at all. Oh yeah, like it's like actually getting information on like like oh okay like you know like what time does it have to be and how do you set that and stuff like that. I really banged my head against that for a while and ultimately kind of gave up. Like it's it's yeah. not as it's not oops it's not as not as preserved and not as easy to use as I thought. Like well, I did the DF Retro on uh, F Zero last year. Mm -hmm. I dug up the complete broadcast for uh, BSX. Yes, uh, that one exists. F Zero. I don't think any of the yeah. Zelda ones, like the actual authentic original Zelda ones, exist. I don't know. I think the wasn't some of them found. I thought it was, but then like it just turned out to be like a recreation of but it. did you search in English or in Japanese I did not search in Japanese I mean I, okay. I wouldn't so I, I wouldn't get very far <laughs> yeah okay well, I'll look on America on America or in Eng in English speaking internet yeah. Uh, yeah. you uh, it's it's not easy to find anything uh, about to tell of you broadcasts and like how to actually use them uh you know from a flash cartridge uh and like it's oftentimes it's like n not as clear as i would like it either like whether it's um uh whether it's the ugh, whether it's uh original audio or reconstructed or reenacted audio right Alan says he had the two disc Super Mario album. Yeah, so that's a old. That's the one. Um, 
where you get like the arrangement album that has the uh, smooth sax uh, like jazz arrangements, which is a really good album. Um, and worth quite a lot of money now, so you said you had it, I hope you still have it. It's, it's a valid album. Fantastic. This is getting quite difficult, huh? Yeah, this is this is this is not an easy fight. Ugh! <laughs> it's only the second time I got to that part, and I died like right away there. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. I mean, you can't fly a little bit closer and drop more shots per second, or. I, uh, this game doesn't top, really but... seem to limit you that way that much, though, compared yeah. to, like, you know, what you would expect. Mm. Yes, he already took a one. Yeah. But by the time I, like, get past that phase, I'm already almost dead. Yeah, that's a problem. It's a really hard to stage until I get wrong. <laughs> How much is left after this? Not too much. Do you think we can make it before midnight? No, I don't know. Uh, at this rate, it's hard to do this one without the full life bar. I mean, you can still do it. Yeah. But, you know. Well, uh, keep the people entertained. I have to use the lavatories. All right. There won't be a lot of looking at the chat right now, though. I am sorry to say, y'all. Oh, I actually did quite good. More, I could probably actually do more damage with the duck at that part. Ugh. Ugh. Okay, okay. Whoa, what are we doing here now? What are we doing here now? Whew. That's tough. I got around to the front. Wow. Yeah. Then he died? Then I died. Oh. Yeah, so it looks like uh, soon enough I will be down back at your place. Oh, yeah? Doing another live stream. You've, 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 you've made plans for when you're coming back to the U.S.? Yes. I'm uh, coming back to North Carolina for work purposes, so. But when? Uh, it will be at the end of this month, it looks like. Excellent. Oh, I see Ashura's here. Good to see you again. Yup. Yes, uh, you can do it. I have hopes you can do it too. Stops taking damage from that angle, so. <sighs> Another pickups video. Five hour pickup video incoming. I don't know if we can, because uh, the thing was last time we did the pickup was that it was like a combined thing. It was uh, the LRG store yeah. openings. We bought games there. Uh, we went to a game store in. 
uh, Where was Green, it? Uh, Greensboro. Greensboro? Yeah. Greensboro. Went to a game store there, picked up a few things, and then you and I just, like... Went to, like, went ten nuts. stores in Charlotte area. Yeah, you and I just, like, okay, we're just gonna find every video game world and whatnot in the area. And we did. <laughs> yeah, we spent, like... <laughs> Ones I didn't even so. know existed? Yeah. Uh, all these random stores in, like, uh, both South Carolina and North Carolina. Mm -hmm. So we did that, and uh, I just don't know if we can do it again. Yeah, as well, I know? mean, I I don't want to do a pickups video that long. No. Like, honestly, like that kind of thing would be fun to do. Like, it would it would not take very much time to make to make it as good as it was or better than it was if it was only like forty minutes in comparison. You know. Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't mind doing another pickups video, because I know you and I are going to go buy a few video games. That's ultimately going to happen every time yeah. they show up. So, inevitably. So, yeah, no, no. Uh, we'll definitely do more pickup videos in person, because we, we really had lots of fun doing so. Oh. Uh, and, you know, we did it all in one take and just kind of uh, never, never stopped, you know. And that's a good way of making videos. Yeah, we only had to... I only cut it, like, five minutes out of the whole thing, really. Yeah. Uh, to my astonishment, you only cut five five minutes or so. And I was like, didn't you say you were going to edit this? It's like, I did. It's like, oh. <laughs> but there just, I like, see. wasn't that much stuff that, like, just was like, okay, we need to move on and get to the point, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There just wasn't that much of that, so... Sandy was there. Yeah. So, good times. But yeah, um, yeah, yeah. We'll definitely do. I think we, you and I, have plans for doing like some actual video content. Yeah, like, yeah, actual, yeah, yeah. Like produced videos together. Yes. Now that'll be in the area much more. So, uh, if you don't like me, this is not a good time to subscribe to my life in gaming. <laughs> but uh, yeah. We, so you and I went to a few thrift stores, and I've been going to thrift stores here and there, and I, I never find anything in them. Did we go? I don't think we went to any thrift stores. Did we not go to the thrift store? I feel like we went to at least one. Am I wrong? I don't. I feel like we didn't. Okay. Oh no! Oh. Didn't realize it was gonna be this phase again. Oh no! Oh, I can't. I can't shoot that one. Now we can. I'll die. I'll die. I'll die. Oh my god. Okay. Can they at least give you like one health power up? <laughs> this seems very unfair. Ah! Oh. <laughs> Can I destroy it from the front or back? I don't know. Or does, like, the front and back, like, have separate parts to destroy? Uh, I think it's separate <sighs> parts. Man. You have 15 minutes to beat it. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I might end up just... Keeping on playing, I don't. I don't uh, all right, I don't, I don't, I'm not gonna stop you from doing so. Yeah, I, I might. I don't know. I got work tomorrow. What, so. what, 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 what else am I going to do in my life? I wonder, would could he be good for this part? No. Because to be honest, it's rather ambiguous. Like what you're actually hitting at this point. Okay, well, at least we got that out of the way now. It's getting better, though. Don't get hit by that laser. What? Oh, I see. I thought... Oh, yes, this. This. Is 
so all those are gone. Someone's saying you're only two bosses away from beating the game. Didn't you say there's a boss rush, though? Maybe I'm wrong, maybe there's not a boss... I seem to recall there was a boss rush, but maybe there isn't. I have been wrong many times. Don't get hit by the ship now, you have nothing to avoid other than the ship. Okay, so I don't think the front is actually a target. Uh, only one way to find out. I don't think it's a target, because no. it, it when it was taking damage, I think it was only... Um, yeah, there was the other. It was well, it was it was the the shooters, yeah. Yeah. So the final target does appear to be, uh, unless you have to do the front after you do the back. Surely not. Don't get hit by the fan. <laughs> oh. That shot was really close. Yeah. He's dead, though. Oh. Okay, there you go. Okay. Oh, wait. Is he gone? I think he's gone. Okay. The tail was the final part. Oh, the level's Woo. still going. I don't like that. Why is the level still going? Why is there a one-up? Why is there points? Why is there life up? Why is the level Actually, still going? life up is, uh, we, we, we want life up. I know, but I want the level to be done. <laughs> okay. Oh. I'm not sure, but I have a feeling you'll die if you touch that firewall. I don't think there's <laughs> much not sure to it. Oh my gosh. Well, so this is the final boss. Is it? Yeah. I was thinking there was going to be like a whole other like on foot level or something. This, this makes me think of the end of Rocket Knight Adventures, where it's just like, oh my gosh, oh, yeah, <laughs> it yeah. needs to go away. I'm so, it's so intense now. Love to not lose my my life up. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> he never no. dies! Oh my gosh, he takes forever! Oh my god. <sighs> yeah, sure, uh, the theme song to the game, to the show, is one of the best. So, you only hear snippets of it in this game, though. Like, it's only at the title screen for, like, they only do, like, the very main chorus part, and that's it. It's kind of weird, they didn't base more of the music on the theme song, like in uh, Ninja Turtles. Some sort of pattern, it looks like. Yeah. I think the fire's getting closer, though, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, the fire gets closer. So, its pattern is limited in its patternization in that regard. Oh my gosh! Oh! I didn't think I had 
been fighting him <laughs> as long that time as the time that I died before. His bold crew. The the your 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 childhood version of this is it in English or was it localized or no it was in English yeah I never you you have all the localized games into <laughs> Scandic nor uh, language to your place the entire library I thought there was I thought you said there were a few others that yeah, there's you, a few more there's a few more um, that you didn't uh, bring I'll, yet yeah I haven't brought them yet wow you actually at the eleven fifty one. You beat Bucky here. Whew. So you actually did what you set out to do on today's stream. I did. How awesome is that? I mean, you know, we 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 we, we are no strangers to beating uh, games on stream, but uh, uh, this one was uh, rather down to the wire. I mean, we 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 try to stop between eleven and eleven thirty. But, you know, yeah, yeah. When you're that close to the end of the game, you can't. You, you gotta go for it. Pretty tough, but but uh, they're quite good. Good game, I mean, right? And really very forgiving with a checkpoint on every screen. Like, yeah. Uh, although when yeah, you when I mean, you was... when you get stuck with. Uh, uh, less life after a checkpoint, though. That that can get rather difficult. If you yeah, really yeah. wanted to, though, you could always go back to a. Uh, you could always go back to a. Uh, the, I guess you could say quit or level select or whatever, and, and yeah. regain your life if you really had to. That's pretty intense last half of the game when you go for the ship. Oh, yeah. And it turns into a shooter, then it turns into, like, escape, a boss rush. Yeah, very, very reminiscent of, uh, of of Rocket Knight, like I say. Mm. Like like I said, like, Rocket Knight was, like, another one of those games when I first played. I'm like, oh, this must be the Treasure Guys, too. And it's like, nope, they'd already left. Because, yeah. like, that, that game is, that game's, that game's intense, too. Yeah. Like it's it's very got much got that treasure vibe that like I mean I, I feel like Konami like I mean like you said earlier in the shoot like you know uh I, I almost feel like Konami kind of out treasured treasure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. At their own game in a sense. I mean you didn't say that exactly, but you know. Like you were alluding to, to the extent of that. Well you were alluding to, you know. <laughs> not not love and treasure as much as most people seem to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I understand where you're coming from, but I still appreciate, you know, the the weirdness they go to. Oh hey! Look who decided to join us. Oh. Uh -huh. It is Sandy. Yeah, you it's Sandy needs to do Africa. You you decide early on this was gonna be a boring stream. Look at that dog. What a wonderful dog. <laughs> Who's that, Sandy? Who's that on that monitor up there? <laughs> you recognize Adi? She okay. looks at me just like Richard Ledbetter looks at me. <laughs> that was the best comment. <laughs> Have you ever beaten TMNT 1 on stream? No. I, I don't think I even did that on a backloggery stream. I did, wow. I did it very long ago, though. Whew, I don't know how easily reproducible that would be on it. Certainly not on like a, I feel like a, I feel like a M League stream is too short to successfully do that. Do you think yeah, you could beat TMNT one in one stream? Probably. Like, but I would have to like spend a week like practicing. practicing it again. Yeah. It's all about getting those scrolls. Uh, so. Yeah, it's it's doable. You, you should try that. So that that would be I I would be into watching that sometime. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah when I'll when try. you're over, like uh, do do some TMNT practice and see yeah, if yeah. you could finish it on stream. I think that'd be fun. Mm -hmm. 
And yes, real talk, Richard did deport me. That's why <laughs> I had to flee to Canada. So. Oh, flashback. R yeah, it's the name Richard, we talked Richard, about that. Richard deported Adi from a country that he wasn't even in. That's yeah, <laughs> that's pretty serious. Uh, that's how that worry. That's 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 how bad it got. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, people are reminding us that we said that I would be playing flashback for you. Oh uh, yeah, because I did another world last time. Yeah, that's but true. Uh, I'm sure we will have time for both. Not in the same stream, but um, someday. Yeah, yeah someday. Well, well, that was I think fun. the text on the screen is sending us off, isn't oh, it? Oh, hang on, though. We always got to check. Is it, is it a hard lock? Yeah. <laughs> that, that, that's, mm, don't make them like they used to. That's always, that's always what we check on the backloggery streams. Like, we, we have to check. Oh, is it a hard lock? Do you prefer a hard lock? Oh, Absolutely. Absolutely hard lock. You know it's the end. Th that's that's, that's the end. Like yeah, like I I love a I love a hard lock. It is, it is it is a lost art because no, we have to save our data so we can have clear data and so we can do new game plus and all these fancy other features. It's like man, you know what? This was it. This was the end. It's yeah. done. It's over. Yeah, yeah, you know, pack it up. Now. You and I probably should say that tomorrow there is the uh, LRG three, the limited run games three, E three stream. Mm -hmm. There's no E three this year. Took uh, took me a while to catch on to the pun on that. Yes, uh, <laughs> where uh, Mark did uh, or try uh, did uh, do some uh, trailer work. Uh, I'm not gonna say which one, so obviously you have to watch to see what games are announced. Uh, but uh, do check that out. Uh, both Try and I worked pretty hard on some of that. So uh, make sure you catch that tomorrow. I think it is at 4 p.m. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So go to Limited Run Games' Twitch page. Uh, and then, yeah, maybe you'll see something you want or not. But you'll definitely see a lot of Try's work during that time. I don't know about a lot. I, don't, I, don't, I, I have no idea... I mean, they said, what, 30-plus <laughs> trailers are going to be in it, is what they tweeted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You did not. I did not do trailers. anywhere near 30 trailers. <laughs> but they did do some very good ones. Oh, so. No. so definitely check that out. And, uh, yeah. This is actually your stream, so I shouldn't be the one sending us off. <laughs> well, yeah. But, uh, yeah. So thanks, everyone, for watching. Thanks to... Everyone who uh, hung out and everyone who uh, sent super chats and uh, it was it was a good time. I'm 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 glad uh, Audi uh, came up with this suggestion for the game tonight. So hey, turned out to be the perfect game time wise, right? <laughs> yeah, very very perfect on the time. Yep. Yeah. All right. Good night, everybody. <laughs>